Welcome back to the most anticipated Talos of EV podcast we've had since Mike has been teasing it. Today, we are doing something cool and unique, but also not original. And I can't describe it better than him. So I'm going to turn it right over to Mike. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How about you, Randy? I'm excited because I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's going to be interesting on the editing front for me. So <laughs> last time we did this was in 2022, but it wasn't us, Randy. It was me and Drew. And at the time, you and Nick were gone. But we are doing a tier list today. So if you are an audio listener, I apologize, but at least you'll be able to hear some of our thoughts while we go through this. We're going to be shotgunning through a lot of them because we have double the amount that we had last time that we did this in 2022. There's been a lot of EVs that have come out. Uh, I've also added some EVs from 2010 onward to here. That's kind of the rules that I'm following with this. I'm not going back in time be uh, before 2010 because a lot of that was... Uh, it's kind of a muddied past of EVs with the government and uh, oil lobbyists and everything else. But starting in 2010, that's when things got a little bit more creative and also blossoming in regards to EVs in the new modern era of cars. So, I've been wanting to do this with you for a while, Randy. I got to do it with Drew, but we never got to hear your thoughts on it. It's been two years. I think it's about time that we check all this out. Let's do it. All right. So, I've got, I think, 73 vehicles here. We're going to start with the startups. Sheesh. For those that are watching this, hopefully this goes well. I might be showing a larger picture of the car later. But we're going to start with the startups because that's something that we can easily knock out quickly. Uh, and we can go back and talk about it more. We we're not trying to make this a two-hour podcast. We're going to start with, I think, what makes sense to me is the sexy lineup. Do you agree, Randy? Let's do it. Yeah. Do we go Let's S for it. sexy with the sexy lineup? Do you think that Tesla okay. pretty much stays in the S tier for a lot of this <laughs> in terms of how it uh, compares to the competition or do you think that some of these have kind of gone down to the a tier no no i i will say right on the on the offset here excluding cybertruck because it's not been out long enough for me to really have formulated thoughts on it but i will mm -hmm. say at least sexy lineup should be in the sexy tier because it is the it was the modern vehicle and then lineup that changed everything you know what i mean like that's the one that uh every ev this whole show even the show everything compares itself to a tesla it does not no way tesla is the bitcoin tesla is the apple tesla is the tried and true reigning top uh starting with the model s for sure and mm -hmm. then the model three some, my personal favorite, Model Y, my also personal favorite, and the X. I've never actually driven in the X, but I've sat in it, and I, it's the, especially back then, like it, Model X was the only one that had ventilated seats and all. Like, man, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I got nothing negative to say about the Tesla lineup. So, in my humble opinion, I say these cars are all sexy material and should be in the S tier. Somewhat biased since you own two of them. Well, at least. The one that's pictured you don't own for the Model 3. It's the uh, refreshed Model 3. But, yeah. Uh, I do own Tune, though, and I that means I put my money where my mouth is and I vote with my dollar. And that's okay. why um, it will... I mean, if it won my wife over, who who's a cynic about tech, knows things about vehicles, but a cynic about tech, if it won her over enough to make us buy a second one, what other brand power has that capability for an automobile, especially in the EV space? Sure. Yes. I think I err more with like the Model X going in the A tier because I feel like the Model Y accomplishes pretty much everything that the X does except for at least being able to put child seats or childs in their seats easily in the back. Uh, it's got a lot of utility already, but uh, the Model X does tow more. But also with that, the Model 3 is edging closer to the Model S with a lot of features. So it's, it's pretty tough to justify a Model S if you're just going for what can I get with X amount of money for the most amount of features. But I think also at the same time, the Model 3 still has a few features missing for FSD that the S has. So 
I don't know. Are you okay with having the X in the A tier, or do you think I'm wrong? No, I would say... No, I'll say it could be in the A, only because that's the one vehicle I've never ridden in, so I... I, I out of the out of the sexy lineup, X is the one I am the the least familiar with. So, okay. If I had not sought desire to ride it before, maybe there's a reason. Especially when Y came around, that I was like, okay, they ain't got nothing wrong with it. A is still A, but hmm. I never I've never driven in one, so maybe there's a reason for that. So, if you want right. to bump it down, I can I can concede to that. Let's address the other two Teslas then in the room. We've got the 2008 Tesla Roadster in the 2023 or 2024 Tesla Cybertruck. Do you think okay. these belong somewhere up with the, uh, I guess, the most bought cars in the industry that are EVs? Or do you think that they belong a little bit lower in like the A tier? I or think they belong lower. lower. They okay. Because uh, Roadster should be lower. Um, but... I would say Roadster no lower than an A, personally, Interesting. because Roadster was the one that um, gave Tesla the life that it needed to then pursue S. There would be no S without the Roadster, and uh, visually speaking, it, since it's in the A category, it's propping up the Model S, which I feel is appropriate. <laughs> so, it's yeah. there. It, it was a... Definitely Gen 1 product in every it, it did, sense It had of a it. proprietary port, and you needed a adapter just to plug into J1772 J1772 ports. And along yeah. with that, uh, I think the thing it had going for it is it had a whole bunch of colors, but that's because Tesla could afford adding a whole bunch of colors to it, where now we're just stuck with five for the sexy lineup, pretty much. So... <laughs> I am being completely biased here by making it... Like, if it was any okay. other company... Gen 1, I would probably put it as a B, but because mm -hmm. it's Tesla and because Tesla is the EV, like that, it started with the Roadster and okay. that's where flowers are flowers are due. Uh, sure. In, strictly because it's only a Tesla. If any other brand, it would be okay. a B or a C. What about the big metal triangle that we just got recently? Before ah. we didn't get to have this on the tier list. I don't think we... Did we have the Roadster on the tier list last time with Drew? I'm not too sure. We didn't even have the Cybertruck on the tier list because we didn't know when it was coming out. Now it's out. I got a nice picture of it towing a... Uh, a oh, goodness. A Merlin engine, I believe, uh, on SpaceX property. Do you think <laughs> the Cybertruck deserves to be in the A tier at all? Or does it just stack up less than the rest of the products that Tesla's made? <sighs> I wouldn't say stack up less. Th so here's why I'm this one. I'm less sure because it didn't live up to the the hype that it was promised with the price point and the, its mm -hmm. features. And and this is not a Gen One product. And this is where I I have to be fair in my love for Tesla. And I kind of want to put it as a B. If I'm being honest, I kind of want to put it as a B. Um, it was grossly behind the the deadline on schedule. Mm -hmm whether it was their fault or not, whether there was a p pandemic or not. Um, the pricing is the pricing, and it's the one vehicle that turned my wife off of ordering when she was initially, that's the one I want. Mm -hmm. Cybertruck be, like validated us getting the Model Y. Um, wow. I think in every sense, in most sense of, of people having a Cybertruck, you can get the same performance or same everything out of your sexy lineup. Okay. I think it's fair to put it in B. It okay. did not live up to expectations. It's something that I didn't go forward with either. It was something we all were really excited for, but I think a lot of that hype might have been a, a tad bit misplaced. But I don't think it's yeah. enough to where it deserves to be in the D. Oh, so I guess since we're done with the Teslas... I forgot to mention for those who are just listening, here's our tiers for our tier list because last time we did this, I felt, or me and Drew felt it was funny to have uh, a tier below F tier. So we've got, sorry, S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, E tier, which you don't typically have E tiers, but whatever, F tier, and then Hummer EV tier. And the Hummer EV <laughs> tier is meant for products that just don't make sense as a product in the market and it's just below 
the bottom in a way. It's it's rock bottom. So that's something that we might address later. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Hummer EV fits in there, but this reflects at least a lot of our reactions to the Hummer EV two years ago and how those reactions are placed today with the current lineup of vehicles that are available to purchase between, or I guess now, but have been made since 2010. So with that, we finished the Teslas. I think it makes sense to maybe address the Rivians in the room. Okay. Uh, I think the truck makes sense since it was the first one to come out. I believe, in my humble opinion, this is a pretty much top A tier product, if not bottom S tier product, because it does everything that it lived up to, in my opinion. It has a whole lot of utility. It is a smaller truck than the rest of the competition, yet still can compete with them pretty well. And it's just a really cool product from a really cool company. So I am, I am wearing my Rivian hat today with my compass yellow proud. It has been on my head every day since, huh? Again, zero bias, (laughs) zero bias. I, I, I wear the sponsorships on my Jersey loud and proud. Um, I, Agree with you. It should be top A or bottom S, and I'm going to give the same kudos that I gave Roadster for what it is. Roadster should have been lower, but because it's Tesla and it's earned its reputation, I said it should be an A. Likewise, Rivian was the first to market electric vehicle truck, lived up to the hype. It, to, in my biased Humble opinion, Rivian is the more refined, more mature, more focused in their own path of things of Tesla. They have so many former Tesla employees working for them. Why would that be? They are they have a vision, they have branding, they have Compass Yellow, which you have turned me on to. And they, unlike Cybertruck, it lived up to the hype. Is it perfect? No. But I would say no vehicle's perfect, but for what you need out of a truck, a small truck that could do so much, and even they got, you know, eccentric with it, with a kitchen, or, you know, it's just the thing that makes it a, a, Rivian, a Rivian, I 100% endorse, love, support, and it is a truck, and I am going to be biased for the fact that it is a truck. Mm-hmm. I say it should be very bottom S tier. I would agree. I think the only things that would convince me to put it at top A tier is that it's got a giant panel on the side that costs tens of thousands of dollars to replace if it gets hit from a (laughs) corner collision or back collision. And also they killed off the best color in the lineup being compass yellow. So that's just me being a little bit salty with it. You're right. I, I, yeah, but it was their first vehicle. It was their first, like it was what an amazing first vehicle. I, the fact that you used the photo of Compass Yellow tells me that mm-hmm. the, that it even existed and they graced us with it. I still say lowest S tier. All right. We'll go with low S tier or lowest S tier. Uh, let's go with its probably most popular brother or sister, okay. the R1S. Yeah. I feel that this goes in front of the R1T <gasps> because th- this is what the moneymaker is for Rivian. This is what people are asking for. It's got amazing off-road capability. It's got a bunch of different options that you can spec it up to to get exactly what you want out of an off-roader or on-roader vehicle for your either just you and your spouse and a whole bunch of dogs or no dogs or all your children. And it can do all of it or pretty much all of it. And it's their second product or I guess technically third if we're including the EDV, but that's not on the list because you can't buy no, that. It doesn't Anyways. count. Um. Your case makes sense. I was going to say A tier. Okay. But I'm What's being biased. What's your case for A tier then? My case for... No, it, it, that's the thing. That's why I was listening to what you had to say because you would be more practical with it. For me, it's just simply because I am not interested in an SUV. I... Okay. It, it was a gen... It was a second product. Gen 1, second product that just just covered the trunk. It just covered the bed of the truck, you know? Um, kind of. It, it it to me 
I, I think it didn't have the same wow factor as it was with Model S and then Model 3 or Model S and Model X or 3 and Y. Like, those were very different products when they came mm. out for the next gen or for the next product first gen lineup. Whereas the R1S is a copy paste minus you, they just covered the, the bed of the, uh, of the, of the, of the truck. And maybe there's nothing. And that's the thing. That's why I want to listen to you. Cause maybe there's nothing wrong with that. It's the most popular for a reason. I, mm-hmm. I, maybe I was looking for something more. I would have said a because of that, but okay. I'm being very biased about this. I think you're not wrong with your assessment. I can compromise and put it below the R1T and the S tier. Okay, I'll do that. I that's maybe that's my problem. I do not sure. agree with the premise that it's it's above the R1T. It is w- equal to because it's the copy paste or mm-hmm. right below because it didn't really do something that much different as what happened. I'm comparing it to a Tesla. Those other vehicles post had something unique each one. So, all right. All right. Yeah, there. Makes sense to me then. Uh, let's go with our controversial topic that we bring up pretty much every other podcast, the Lucid Air. Uh, there's so many different versions of the Lucid Air. Specifically, I think there is, there we go, seven different trims of it, and all are super expensive, very great at efficiency. Software has been getting better over time, but the price hasn't been getting better over time, and the cost for Lucid to build it doesn't look like it's getting out of the the black the red the red anytime soon where do you feel is appropriate for it i think probably b tier if i'm being honest as a product just i guess you'd have to ignore all the focus that they've put on it but as a product it is very efficient it can do many different things it's got a whole bunch of range yeah, it is a sedan that's luxury focused, and we already have too many of those, and people don't really care about luxury sedans anymore. But it does a lot of great things that people should copy with efficiency and focus on that performance and luxury. So I think it deserves to be somewhat where the Cybertruck is. It's disappointing in price. It's disappointing as just they keep on using it as the base rock, but it's pretty much gravel at this point that keeps on sliding down and they really need to move on to a better base structure. And the air is just dispersing like air, in my opinion. I, this is our first, you're right. It is controversial. I so wholehearted, wholeheartedly disagree with you. I wanted to fell the sucker or maybe E at best okay. because the software's trash. Unlike Cybertruck. The go away with the bubbles that came up on OBS. It's not on. Oh, it is. Yeah, anyway. the software is trash. the The price is trash. There's nothing unique about this vehicle that you couldn't get in the sexy lineup, there or legacy for that matter. The software is trash. Like you can't you can't be bad with software on an EV when that's the only tangible interactive like that's the ui element for the whole thing hence why it's something like fisker which we'll talk later you know like same thing software drives the product and it is Mm -hmm. trash and the only reason why i would give it an e is because for some weird reason they're still in existence in 2024 and i mean i mean we know why it's saudi money right so as long Mm. as there's oil being made for gas vehicles there's going to be a lucid (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that does make me a little bit salty as well with a lot of the things that are included on this list. A lot of them got killed off because of the oil companies. And the oil company yeah. is the one, or the oil companies, just on different shores, are the ones keeping this thing alive. Where does it feel like Lucid should get away with it, where Fisker cannot, even though Fisker had its own private issues as well? Maybe, but I would, I might secede as well. Maybe C in my opinion, since I'm the one holding the cursor and the torch here, we can maybe <laughs> debate it later uh, at a later time in this podcast and we can fight over whether it actually deserves to be at sea when comparing it with other legacy vehicles. And you can make a case would... for why it's worse than a Chevy Bolt or something else. 
I, I, I would make the case it belongs in D at highest because I don't <laughs> want it to be in D. But we will see how the rest of the lineup lines up because if you put this thing above a Ford or something, we going to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and well, I don't think opinion. Ford is above. I don't, actually, I don't know yet. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I, I, I just, I, I that. hate what this company stands for because it's not authentic, it's not genuine, it's not original, and they're just luxury for being luxury. And I've seen so many videos about its crap quality for it being luxury over the mocked Tesla vehicles. I just okay. I, I also don't see it and put in D then. All right. For now. I'm done. I'll leave it alone. That's probably our biggest friction I think you and I will experience throughout this whole listing. I just do not like this car. I want to fail it. You want it a B. And I was like, all right, well, then let's go in the middle and go D because <laughs> I, I hate this thing. I hate this thing. All right. With that, since we talked about Fisker a lot, let's address that interesting let's do blue it. elephant. I think it also deserves to be in D. I think it's in the same bucket as Lucid. They uh, did not put a lot of focus on their service or their software, and they've been mismanaging money, making bad decisions left and right. The only people who are keeping it afloat are the service people who are going out to these people's homes and trying to make the car work as best as it can before the company goes under because they filed for bankruptcy. The fact that they filed for bankruptcy, I would... I would put it in F, like you failed. Like that's a straight F or failed. The company didn't survive. Lucid should be an F for the reason that it should have failed. It isn't failed yet because of artificial stimulation of keeping it alive. But Lucid would have had the same fate, if not sooner than Fisker. And my judgment of how a product is would survive or should survive it's based off of genuine hype or love for the product, not the backing of multi-billionaire Saudi money or anything for that matter. Um, but the fact that it filed for bankruptcy and we don't even know where it's going to exist very shortly, it, it failed. It was one of the ones that didn't make it. I have a, like, you didn't make it. Y you, you botched the software. You mm -hmm. botched the, you didn't like the landing, you didn't stick to landing. We've talked about on the podcast and previous episodes about a, a, a more conservative approach to getting your startups up and going. But everyone just thinks that like, oh no, they're just, I felt like Fisker hop, hopped on the EV bandwagon and they weren't serious. As is Lucid, as is other, uh, you know, categories that we'll address later. It shouldn't be, it just shouldn't be, it failed. So I would yeah, we'll go in the middle again. No, I'll I think e. e is fair for it because they have a lot of interesting ideas. I liked what they were putting out with the pair. But I mean, we're judging the ocean and specifically yes. Yes. whatever tier of ocean you want to talk about. It was very expensive and it just didn't live up to that price. Kind of like yes. Cybertruck, but at least Cybertruck has an axe port and a whole bunch of other stuff going for it compared to the Fisker Ocean, which has California mode. But if the software is not working right, you're going to have some windows stuck open or stuck closed. So right. I think E tier, it, it's, it's less usable than a Lucid. But at least Lucid's still around where I, who knows. If by the Lucid time files up, for bankruptcy, they don't, the highest they deserve is F, if not Hummer EV. But anybody who, who, who I'll tell you right now when we hit other ones, anything that filed for bankruptcy, I, I put it in F because okay. it failed. It didn't make it. That's my, that's my, uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200. All right. Uh, All let's right. go for the other one that has failed. The Lordstown <laughs> Endurance, yeah. uh, specifically is now being marketed under the new name Land X, but, uh, the product name, I don't think has a product name yet. Might still be the Endurance. Uh, this one had a very interesting history of, uh, Lordstown teaming up with Foxconn, then falling out with Foxconn and ending up instead of going to the Foxconn uh, factory, went to the GM factory that was not too far, only made about uh, around, oh, 
I think one of the numbers that I found is like five to 10 <laughs> to deliveries that weren't employees. And uh, yeah, it had some good things going for it being in wheel hub motors. And I think it just came at the wrong time specifically with uh, COVID, the supply chain and lack of reservations. There's that whole issue with Hindenburg exposing the lack of reservations. They're touting a whole bunch, but there was actually not that many ending up nice. in a chapter 11 bankruptcy. And now they're trying to pick up the, or at least the CEO is trying to pick up the pieces again with this vehicle. Yeah. I think it deserves to be an F because. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Yeah. It, yes. I, they tried, they failed. I don't think it deserves to be in the Hummer EV tier because it's not abysmal. They actually had a vision. I could see that vision, but I think they were hit with too many punches at the get go and they're a new company and they didn't know what to do and they tried their best. But I agree. I don't think there was necessarily there is some malintent with reporting how many reservations you have and then someone revealing actually you don't have that many reservations and even more controversy around there. But they got around to delivering something and they believed it. And there's a lot of people that, uh, from what I can observe, cared about the product. All right. All right. With that, then, let's go with our <laughs> Vietnamese uh, company here with the uh, VinFast, specifically the VF8. I think this company deserves to be at a C tier, in my opinion. Why? It, even though that they have been stumbling left and right everywhere they go, they're trying their best. And that's what I like about it is that they keep on giving these automotive journalists their car again and again and again, like Donut Media or just maybe not Donut Media, but Donut, the uh, YouTube channel. They gave the VinFast to them twice to review. First one, got a bad review. Second time, they're like, we fixed all the things, or we think we fixed all the things that you want us to fix. Please try it out. And they found that VinFast did indeed uh, specifically help with the ride comfort and the software and a bunch of other things. So I think even though that's backed by a billionaire that's dumping so much money into this company that's insane and the product is definitely not inspiring or unique on the inside or the outside did i say car company the car the vehicle is not inspiring on the inside or outside the company is trying their best and i'm somehow rooting for them even though that their lineup isn't exciting to me at all I will leave it at C for now because I don't actually know where to place it. I will compare this to other vehicles later. So we'll keep it at C for now because that's my I don't know where you belong sector. Yeah, it's had poor quality, uninspired interior. Uh, interior. Okay. They lease their batteries. They don't even sell you the battery. They lease the battery to you. But at least they have a heads up display. <laughs> Is that Maybe it deserves to be in D. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it, it, is that C tier quality right there? <laughs> I think they're probably right, we'll a D. step below Lucid after going through all those facts. Okay. All right. Here's a company that you've probably heard of and you've forgotten about because, well, they're only delivering a very small amount of them. The Faraday Future FF91. This F car, F91. all I have to tell you, that might just sway all of your opinions. Costs three hundred and nine thousand dollars to buy, dude. And the only people who are getting this vehicle right now are tech CEOs, and it's not because they have all this money laying around ready to buy a vehicle. It's because they're also being picked by the company to buy the car. It's almost like a Ferrari situation where you don't get to buy the Ferrari. Ferrari gets to sell you the car. Nah, I don't like that business model at all. That is. Are you keeping it E? Is that E? That is a low E that I put in right now. I think they're below Fisker in regards to something that I'm really excited about. They've got a lot of interesting features. It, it's this just... is the first time I'm going to actually disagree with you on the higher end. I think it should be above Fisker. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You think that they're doing something right with only doing a few deliveries with a very high price. I, it's not that they're doing something right. It's what Fisker did wrong and that they filed for bankruptcy. I can't, in good conscience, put a, a company behind another company that has filed for bankruptcy. I just, that's that's my own 
that's a that's a me thing i i okay. i'll keep it as uh, that's a disgusting price point i hate that it's disgusting okay. that they're trying to make oh we'll pick you you don't buy us we buy you i hate everything about that but until they file for bankruptcy they're still in the game and again i feel like fisker should be in the f tier because i feel like they're out of the game they're just artificially not gone yet but they should be how much um, range do you think the ff91 has Ooh, I being a three hundred and nine thousand dollar. I'll tell you what it should have. (laughs) It has three hundred and eighty one miles of range. EPA estimated. Actually, I would have said something like that. I would have said okay, close to four hundred. And that's with a one hundred and forty two kilowatt hour battery. So they put some time into it. They put a whole be lot of money Fisker. into it. I agree. I think it should be above Fisker. Okay. I think the only thing that it's got uh, against uh, VinFast, or maybe what VinFast has against it, is that the VinFast is a lot more affordable than okay. <laughs> the Faraday feature. So people could actually buy the CV. This is actually something you could buy, even though it's made in very interesting circumstances in Vietnam. And... Uh, has a lot of other things going wrong with it. At least you could buy it and you can actually drive it versus the Faraday feature that you have to get chosen pretty much to okay. buy and or drive this thing. With that, some other company that seems like it's on the ropes, uh, Arkamoto. Specifically, Arkham- the Arkamoto FUV that has a three wheeled, uh, almost like a motorcycle steering mechanism and how you steer the vehicle with no doors. I think you could get doors on it. A whole bunch of different options that you can get attached to it, whether you want it to be like a cargo carrier or something else. Costs $19,000. It sounds like the business is failing. And I don't see a reason for myself to buy one. <laughs> okay. Or why why I should be really excited for it when something like the Aptera is on the horizon that offers the same things but with a steering wheel and just does so much more in terms of range and we everything can't, We can't compare it to a product that's not out yet. That's the right. that's the fallacy we did with Cybertruck before Cybertruck came out. We can't do that. Aptera is not a part of the discussion. Okay. So where the do you think The only thing that exists then... right now is this vehicle. Where do you think our Komodo FUV sits then? Does it sit in D tier with Lucid and what, Okay, 19,000. What's the range? The range is 102 miles because it's running on a 20 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually pretty good. 20 kilowatt hour battery for 102 miles of range, GPA estimated, 19, I believe. 000. Is it street legal? It is street legal. But I believe it's... Uh, I don't have its max speed. I, th- I think it's around 85 miles per hour. I don't know if that's even correct. But it's 0 to 60 is like in 7.5 seconds, which isn't half bad, though that might be kind of scary in a three-wheeler that doesn't have doors and you're steering it with handlebars. I would put it... I would put it in C or above Lucid because it's affordable, it's street legal, it can go up to at least 60, so it's 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 also competent in 2024 and uh you can buy it like it's it's there it's a thing in a world where aptera exists we would have a different conversation that vehicle technically does not exist yet i can't in good conscience rank it with that so for what it is it's the cheapest thing you've just said and maybe it's the juxtaposition between that and the three hundred thousand dollar car you just compared it to if people want something that's unique and nineteen thousand dollars is not nothing but it is the cheapest thing you're gonna get new yeah i'd say c for right now or above lucid d one of those two <laughs> i think we'll settle a c for now and see how it shakes up with the rest of legacy fair. auto we yes, have that's one fair. more startup Let's this one it. is no longer with us anymore specifically it's the coda coda sedan <laughs> i think it's the coda and then dash sedan uh, this is something that has reemerged in the zeitgeist recently because of people like Out of Spec Motors and uh, Aging Wheels, I believe. I think he owns one as well. Uh, it looks like a Sonata. 
It's actually built off of a Chinese sedan called the Hafei Saibao. I'm sorry. I totally butchered that. Uh, you but it has a lithium iron phosphate battery. So many that have been found after being abandoned for many years that haven't been crushed, in which I believe there's only 117 units that were sold. Who knows if that's the same that are on the road today or if most of them have been destroyed. Uh, I wouldn't put it past them. But this thing had a lithium iron phosphate battery, which means it's still very much usable after they went bankrupt, I believe, in 2012. And that's the only year that they were pretty much delivering these things. And based off of your metrics, we're doing anything 2010 forward. Yes. I think this deserves to be in the B tier. Mainly because... All right, my question's for you. Okay, go ahead. Go go ahead. ahead. I was going to say mainly because it's pretty much what Tesla was doing with the Roadster, but it went wrong. They were trying to take an existing chassis of a vehicle and make it their own. And because of a lot of pitfalls that they met along the way, they just weren't able to make it where a company like Tesla succeeded. But it's, I think the technology in it is something to be admired by because it's a simple vehicle. I think it has a touchscreen, but also has a CD player. So even if the touchscreen doesn't work anymore because of software, you can still put in a CD if you have CDs and still listen to your favorite songs and enjoy them without uh, just sitting there playing Bluetooth or uh, just playing on speaker phone on your phone, your favorite playlist. So it's a fancy way more like we, we still have some analog features involved here. Yes. All right. My question is at the time, all right, we're going to ju- not, not adjust for everything, but for its time, 2012 mm-hmm. does, what was its price and what was its range? Right. So that's something else that I want to clarify as well at the end of the segment is that the prices that I'm quoting are at point of sale at the time. So these point aren't prices. Of sale. Yes. Uh, so not prices today because then you have to adjust for inflation and everything else and it gets real complicated. And Tesla so I just, changes their prices every three minutes. Right. So a lot of the prices that I put for Tesla are actually null and void at this point. <laughs> so Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so, for so the Coda sedan at? at the time, it was $37,250. Base price, I believe. And okay. that gets you 88 miles of range with a Whew. 31 kilowatt hour battery. Now, bear in mind, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery, so it's going to be really heavy. It's not super energy dense. Yeah. But it gets you 88 miles pretty much consistently for the rest of its battery life. And it's somewhat analog. Its curb weight's around like 3,600, so it's around the weight of my Model Y. Uh, Well, mine's around 4,000 something. So it's hovering around there, but it's, it's pretty much built for longevity is what I'm getting at. And I think okay. that kind of sits in the B tier somewhat with the Cybertruck, which is somewhat built for longevity, assuming that you're not leaving it out in the rain all the time to get rusted. Right. I feel, okay, taking in consideration for its time and its only, you know, part time of, its, its short time of existence there, B feels appropriate or a high C feels appropriate. Um Okay. Even for 2012, by then we had it. Did Model S come out 2012? It came out in 2012. Yes, you have a good memory. I I, I remember that year. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say it's a C tier because price is great, range really isn't. But Model S had more range at a higher price. Oh, mm. hang on. Let me think. I might be swaying myself to low B. <laughs> that 88. If you would have said it had 100 miles flat, I would have said B. Easy. Three digit B. But also 2012. 30, under 40,000. Well, that's back I'm in 2012. Just, <laughs> and, we're, and, we're, so and we are it's kind of expensive i right 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 and that's the thing that's 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 my hang up in 2012 that's a lot of money and i'm not trying to compare it to gas vehicles that were 
way cheaper. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. This this existed so the other startups of EV startups could run, right? This one walked. Mm-hmm. I will give it its flowers. I will say a low B. I feel like I'm being generous, wow. but it 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 did its part. <sighs> High C, like it also feels like it's the highest C um, out of any other thing that would be on the list. It it's right there. It's either or, and I will be okay with the lowest B or the highest C, and you have my blessing. Wow, and you can still plug it into chargers these days that have J seventeen seventy two plugs. So it is, I mean, everyone's going to Nax, but still for a lot of the plugs that are available at ChargePoint, uh, Electrify America, all the other ones, Volta, uh, it could still plug into those. So I think right. that's what gives it, it's like the, lo, it's the tried and true mule, I believe, yes. of the EVs. Shall we move on to the, uh, the Legacy Auto, Randy? We shall. Three days later. All right, Randy, let's start with Mini Cooper since it is a funny little car that I think uh, garners a lot of attention on the road with how small they are. But what do you think of the Mini Cooper Electric? This came out in 2019 and is still being made presently. Uh, Well, at least the delivery run. Right. But for this, it doesn't really have impressive range. 110 miles with a 32 kilowatt hour battery. And what's really interesting is it utilizes the BMW i3 technology in it. What's our price? What are we looking at for price? Oh, uh, 30900 is the base price as far as I can tell. I would put that right in the middle of a C. I put that C. Probably right next to Arkham Auto. Yeah. Like the, the range in 2019 leaves a lot to be desired, especially for the price. At that time, cheaper than mm-hmm. other cars in 2019, from what I remember. But uh, the range really, really kind of like docks it. I, I, yeah, and, and charging efficiency is what, yeah, I'd say, I'd say C is a good middle ground for it. It's not the worst, definitely not the best. Um, sure. Right down the middle. I agree. Speaking of i3, we also have that on here as well. I think it's fair that it probably sits a bit above the Mini Cooper, maybe even above the Arkhamoto. Uh This was a the first mass-produced carbon fiber tub on a production vehicle. Carbon fiber uh, tub. Uh-huh. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that Aptera is doing today kind of roots a lot of its technology fundamentals <laughs> with the i3, if I can recall correctly. Uh, they stopped making in 2021, but okay. they started in 2014. Started around $42,000 and had around 153 miles of range with a 42 kilowatt hour battery. So I'd say they, they put in a little bit more battery. They put, of course, the BMW luxury in it. And I think it deserves some kudos for uh, revolutionizing what carbon fiber looks like in production vehicles that are affordable or somewhat affordable. I told you... I don't know if we said this on air or off air at any point, but I am judging these based off of the product category, like the type of class it is, like BMW, Mercedes, and Audi are going to get graved on a, graded on a curve because of its <laughs> status symbol as opposed to a Nissan or a Toyota. So for the fact that a BMW of that caliber not being... I know it starts in 2014, so price adjust for pricing there, but mm-hmm. it being an EV carbon fiber and under $60,000 in 2014, by then you have already Model S out there. And I, I am impressed with its specs considering. So I would say a very high C tier because it's not the best by any means. Yeah, especially for where it exists on the timeline of its, uh, you know, life cycle. But I'd say a very high C, like a C plus. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it at top of C then. Okay. Moving on to its uh, predecessor in the lineup, the BMW iX. This is, of course, uh, well known for its giant kidney grills. Uh, specific. I don't know where to put this thing. I'll keep it right here for right now. But, uh, of course, big focus on luxury. 
uh, they slammed a 111 kilowatt hour battery in this thing to get 311 miles of range. And uh, it apparently the grill has like some self-healing coating for the sensors, which is interesting. Okay. Um, but it utilizes prismatic lithium ion cells. Ow. It's definitely in the C tier. I don't know where in C. Uh, does it go in front of its predecessor or behind it? I... I'd say behind it because the first one had a maybe oh, maybe successor. A cool- My bad. <laughs> huh? Predecessor successor. I just realized I totally mixed up those words. But yeah, I would say I'd put it below the i3. Because- I, I I agree. Below. It, it doesn't have the same impact as the first one, but still mm. a solid contender. I think the kidney grills really push it back for me. <laughs> those things are massive. I'm indifferent about that. I think I I think I would. In 2020, let's remember, in context, in 2022, chip shortage, everything was very expensive, 80 grand, I'm not going to be like, <clears throat> and clutch my pearls for that, even though it is expensive, that's, I mean, I had an offer on a Model 3 back in late 2021 for close to 80 grand, and I said no, so it, it was a product of its time for its pricing, so put that to the side, the range uh, is uh, gets my applause, and it's still a luxury vehicle, so 80 feels like it's more appropriate. I would say it doesn't have the same impact as the first one, the i3, but I will give it like a 77%. So right, maybe right behind it. Gotcha. I think uh, to be a little bit quicker on this as well, I'm going to probably put the i4, the i5, and the i7 all behind the ix pretty much in sequential order of when they're released if i believe correctly because this is the four series the five series and the seven series bmws electrified Uh, the four series uh saw a whole bunch of recycled material put into it which i think is really cool um the five series is just of course a more sportier and luxurious version of the i4 um introduced plug and charge for bmws and then the i7 whole lot more luxury, a whole lot bigger price tag, has that giant uh, screen that is for the rear passengers that spans the whole width of the car pretty much. I guess in price, if you're trying to gauge that, it's 52, 66, and 105. So a little bit below and a little bit above the iX, and all those are pretty much uh, star deliveries in America from 2022 and 2023 and are still made today. All right. No, I I agree. No, no, C to me is just like you're there. You know, you, you're you're average. Nothing to write home about. Nothing I would go out of my way to recommend. But I would pick them over. You know, definitely over our our, our lower tier ones that I've seen so far. So C C's a right. a comfortable spot for them. I think it does well for the BMW brand. It gives an option for those that want sure. to explore an electric vehicle but stay within that ecosystem. Gives yeah. them that option. But I I have to sit inside one and experience the sportiness and the luxuriousness of it and compare it to what we have on this tier list to yeah. probably gauge a better opinion for the products. But uh, they, they do capture the BMW style. Yeah. All right. Rolls Royce. Spectre. Uh, this thing is probably one of my favorite things on this list just because it, it's even though its specs are abysmal with a uh, 102 kilowatt hour battery that only takes it 264 miles with a price tag of $450,000 it, it knows what it is and of course Rolls-Royce uh, only pretty much built it because they asked their customers do you guys want an electric vehicle yet and everyone pretty much unit unanimously said yes i will buy one if you make one so they focused of course on the rolls royce fundamentals of luxury sound dampening somewhat sportiness but uh didn't really propel it forward with any technology regarding charging curve speed or anything else like that so i'm looking at the specs here uh, i I'm trying to disregard the point of sale price at its time. Uh, mm-hmm. That is something I will more or less omit. 
because it's legacy, but I... 260, okay. For 2023, I don't like those numbers, if I'm being honest with you. The highest I would give it is a C. Like a low C. Okay. I would put it Ooh. P- pretty pretty low. Like, let me look at my uh, range here. I would put it above... No, no, I would put it below the, the, the Mini Cooper, just out of affordability wow. factor. Okay. That's where I would put All it. All right. I'd probably put it a little bit above. Most likely, I think... Actually, I'd probably put it at the top of C. <laughs> Maybe right next to the i3, either in front of it or behind it. Um, but, uh, I'm right, willing well, to concede something in between, pretty much above the Arkhamoto, but below the BMWs. Okay, we'll do that. Cool. Uh, as you can tell, I've kind of grouped these in their different uh, parent companies. We yeah. got the Smart 4.2, and it's not F O U R T W O. It's F-O-R-T-W-O, because it's for two people. Two. <laughs> uh, it's also called the EQ. But uh, this thing was sold in America between 2009 and 2019. Uh, only could go 58 miles, but it had a 17 kilowatt hour battery. And uh, I don't think... Th- yeah, they're not selling them in America anymore because they didn't see a decent demand in America for it, which makes sense. We, we buy huge vehicles here compared to Europe who considers compact vehicles the gold standard for what you want to buy. Yeah. Uh, which is slightly unfortunate. But fun fact, the early models use Tesla motors and batteries, which is pretty unique. I would give it... I, I'd put it above the Lucid. High D. D+. plus. Wow. Okay. Why is that? Just because it's not... It's, the range is just abysmal, and the utility is abysmal, so it has to go below. Secure. Range utility not sold in America, so even though it's consumer, uh, co- yeah, it's commercial sale, but not in the sense that we can just anybody buys it. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I high D because it they after twenty twenty they only make EVs. Even, mm-hmm. Not that it matters to us, but I mean, they've been around since 2009, and if you couldn't sustain today in the America market, uh, I just in good conscience, I can't put that above a Mini Cooper. Okay. I, I agree. I think uh, smart car or smart, the smart brand needs to do something a little bit more revolutionary and or a cultural shift has to occur in America. I concur. And smart car has to introduce something that's a little bit more unique to their brand. Yeah. It's uh it's good for inner city travel, but and also parking in smaller spots which is nice, but at least for our use cases I don't think it uh it ranks that high in utility or usability for a lot of the things that we do. Yeah. I, I like for size. Um, if I find more value, even in cargo space, in a Mini Cooper, it has to go in front of the Smart. But that's all I guys. All right, we're we're good. Right. Quick correction: that was the BMW group. When we just started the Daimler group with the Smart car, we're now moving on to Mercedes Benz with the whole swath of EQSs, EQEs, and an EQB. Um, Let's these things try to are group really- them kind of all together since there's a few these things were just so confusing to look up and try to figure out which ones are like what features ones have compared to the others of course the s is the the top tier of the eq series from mercedes the uh e-class of course eqe uh and then you got the eqb and in the i guess europe they use eqa for uh, the A class, I guess we use the B class for some reason. So we got the right. EQB SUV. <laughs> I would say the big disappointing thing about the EQS is is that they showed off that prototype, and it got me excited for what Mercedes could be bringing in terms of design to the EV space. And they settled on what looks to be a Honda Civic. <laughs> so <laughs> Honda Civic, and then turned it yeah. into a SUV. <laughs> And gave it the same name, so you can't really delineate the two easily without saying this is the sedan version versus this is the SUV, where something 
I guess, compared to, I don't know, at least like the, I mean, we could just go back to Tesla. You got the Model Y and the Model 3. Yeah. Two different things. They look the same, but the name differentiates yeah. the... I For the, the record, platform, I like Honda Civics, so that's not a that's not a diss on my if I'm scoring it. I like that, but no, I get Randy, I get I get what you're, you're saying paying, though. You're paying it had the Cybertruck effect, the expectation versus what we were delivered in many aspects. You're kind of like, well, darn. Uh, I was excited for you, and and then reality hit. So, I think these deserve to go between the BMWs and the Rolls yes. Royce because they do better on price than the Rolls Royce, but in terms of <laughs> yes. style, and they do luxury decently well. Of course, no one's going to beat out Rolls Royce most likely in luxury, but they do luxury decently well, and the specs aren't too bad. Right. Uh, considering the fact that you get 352 miles on a 118 kilowatt hour battery, and uh, I guess anything below that, it goes, I think, all the way down to 245 uh, miles for the EQB. So yeah. I would think that they sit nicely uh, I agree. in between the BMW Group vehicles. And R- Rolls Royce, where are you at? I'm, I, I'm following. I'm following along with you. People at home or YouTube podcast listening, uh, Mike has his up on the screen, but I'm just mirroring his, and uh, I am squinting my eyes. I don't got my glasses on. I don't know why I thought <laughs> taking off my hat would help me see better, but I feel like I can see better. <laughs> yeah. So at least that that closes out Daimler for us with the smart car and Mercedes Benz vehicles. Let's move on to the blue oval. Specifically, start with something a little bit older that you might not remember, or maybe you do remember, Randy. The Ford Focus Electric. This I was thing, around. I was yeah, old well, I, enough I would hope to... So. <laughs> I mean, everything that we're covering is 2010 and after, so I'd hope... But I'm old! That even 2010! Some listeners... Maybe not EV. That's what I like about our, our audience for EV. We have a seem, I seem to notice we have a bit of an older generation which i can appreciate so we can all talk about stuff that i don't know kind of fits our you know our our own personal class of understand whereas like tech we have a lot of younger people who are interested because that's what they can that's all they can afford so it's a little bit harder Mm -hmm. to relate on some things but when it comes to evs i feel like now we're a little bit of a mature audience so i feel like anybody who's right now listening to this with us like you're you are just as nerdy about this stuff as we are, and you're in the weeds with it just as we are. So uh, you're my type of people. So we can all we can all appreciate this. But yeah, the Ford Focus. Let's let's talk about this uh, this thing. So I wanted a Ford Focus at one point, not the electric one, uh, the more sportier Focus RS or the ST. Uh, never went into that commitment, Same. but. <laughs> this is pretty much Ford putting their foot in the water. I wouldn't say putting their toe in the water because that was pretty much the uh, the Ranger EV back in, uh, oh goodness, the late 90s. Late 90s. But uh, for the Ford Focus Electric, it was them seeing what uh, Nissan was doing and some of the other competitors on the market were doing. And we're thinking, we could probably convert this into an electric vehicle Yeah. and made a 115-mile range Ford Focus on the same platform that the gas vehicles had, uh, but with a 33 kilowatt hour battery. So the efficiency wasn't too good. Uh, they, I believe, sold it for MSRP around, I think, $13,000, which is a really good entry price. Uh, Talk about styling... efficiencies real quick, because you, you say 33.5, or, or mm-hmm. no, actually, I, I'm saying 33 because that's what the spreadsheet says. But for listeners, I, I don't know if we've ever actually talked. Maybe we did. If not, then I'm just awkwardly stopping the show here but um the higher the number or the lower the number dictating efficiency you are your your what is uh, hold on look at the special real quick what is the highest kilowatt hour uh general motors is that it the highest the kilowatt hum- hour i believe on our list is the hummer EV. i'm looking at it okay so With around yeah. 246 kilowatts <laughs> yeah i'm looking at it kilowatt hours. so uh the higher the number the more kilowatt hour you're using thus 
high it's 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 inverted higher is not better because you're using more energy the lower the number the more efficient it is but when we talk about that we're also talking about it at its time of launch at, at a different you know uh when we look at tesla as opposed to say the ford focus right mm-hmm. um we we are we are addressing efficiencies for its for its its time in history so um we're not this comparing is around 300 watt hours per mile in terms of efficiency right you want compared to what you drive today which is around i think i think you get around 215 to 230 with your model 3 right that sounds yeah or somewhere yeah. around 250 i get around 280 for my global efficiency for my model y right so for the time it, i mean it wasn't terrible but <laughs> It's no, also but not it's not that good for some. It wasn't good, and uh, no. I just I guess what I'm saying, if anybody had questions up to this point, that we are we are judging them on its its time on the timeline, not where it stacks up uh, today. Because if that's the mm. case, a lot of these guys, I mean, it just all the old ones are going to go down to the bottom, yeah, right, and all the new right, ones yeah. are going to tend towards the top. In which there is some of that bias with what technology packages come into it, uh, how they can charge. Right. And just, I guess, how it all stacks up as a product for the consumer. Yeah. So, of course, the elect- the Ford Focus Electric isn't going to score a bunch of high points on this tier list for us. But it did help Ford understand how to produce an electric car for the yes. masses and take that next step into the pool of EVs, getting their calves and their legs and the rest of it uh, a bit more immersed with what would be the Mach E, the E Transit, and the F one fifty Lightning, which we'll get to later. But for at least let's cut to the chase. Ford Focus Electric, I think this deserves to be above the Arcimoto, but below or either above the Arcimoto or above the Mini Cooper and C tier. I think it did decently well. It there's a few people that I knew that bought this and they enjoyed it. Uh reliable vehicle as far as I can tell. I'd have to do a little bit more research. I <laughs> honestly the 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 year of this one is 2011 um i i want to go higher to be honest maybe to me i would put it above (sighs) maybe above the bmws yeah that's 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 where i was that's where i was feeling okay i agree just 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 mainly because we uh like you said it, it it ford learned a lot from it and in 2011, we were looking at thirteen thousand dollars, dude. Yeah, I, I would for an EV, a uh, hundred over a hundred miles. It, it's it's already beating out a lot of these other ones that I'm I was grading on a mm-hmm. curb. Like the 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 um, I might have uh, to fact check that number as well, Randy. I I may have actually grabbed that from uh, Kelly Blue Book or something like that. So it might be higher. To okay. Be well, then even then, like I put. We put the the Coda sedan in the B tier, and it, it had worse output for its time. The Coda sedan uh, was made in 2012, so a year later. But of course, the uh, the <laughs> how am I forgetting the name of it? The Ford Focus Electric was from 2011 to 2018. The Coda was only pretty much in 2012. What was uh, the range in 2012? It, uh, the Coda got 88 miles of range on a 31 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's something that I should push a little bit further on this is that it was using lithium iron phosphate battery technology. So its longevity is amazing. Uh, and it used yeah. a touch screen, but it's got a CD player and all that. So that's why I justified the Coda's placement in low B as something that you can still use today without any issue. But a year prior... It with with the Ford Focus and your starting price is thirteen thousand, uh, well, over thirty seven thousand for the Coda. Um, well, again, I have to fact check that number on whether it is actually thirteen thousand. It, I would say conservatively maybe twenty thousand or twenty five thousand. There's also incentives to include in there as well. So, who knows where it stacks up? But I would say it probably sits below the Coda in my book. I agree. Yes. Uh, I. Only because we have to fact check it. <laughs> Just because we have to yeah. fact check it. And which we'll leave that for another time. Maybe I'll add it in the description or I'll add it in some caption right here. Uh, with that, let's move on to the controversial Ford Mustang Mach-E. 
only because <laughs> no matter what name they chose for this thing in this whole timeline, people were going to get mad. They initially uh, unveiled it with a tentative name of the Mach 1. People didn't like that because the Mach 1 was a pre-existing vehicle that people loved. Uh, I believe it was also derived from the Mustang group, uh, the Mach 1. So they quickly took that back, said, you know what? We need to figure out what people like and how we should call this first electric vehicle in our electric lineup that we're going to seriously invest in. And they chose the Mustang family yes. and the styling and all that. And then and that Mach-E. within itself is also a bit controversial. Yes. So d- at first with that, I was a little bit uh, annoyed with it being called a Mustang. My wife is still annoyed with it being called a Mustang. We saw so many on a recent road trip that we took, but uh, I've, I've kind of grown comfortable with it being in the Mustang family only because it does embody all the things that a Mustang uh, presents to the customer. It's uh-huh. sporty. Mm-hmm. It has performance. Uh, it's got decent driving characteristics. Its acceleration is in the same range, I believe, as a Mustang Coupe. It's just this is a electric crossover, which is very controversial to call it a Mustang in that way. But Th- That's the controversial part. I think the specs on paper, and also what people have experienced for the last, uh, oh goodness, since 2021, so it's been about three years with this vehicle. I think it's carved a decent... Uh, place in the market for itself. I agree. Where people will buy it because it is, uh, by many opinions, much better looking than the Model Y. It has a little bit less uh, efficiency and performance than the Model Y, but I believe the handling is a little bit better and it looks a lot better and it's got some features that the Model Y doesn't. It has more overlap with people who are insecure or just ignorant about EVs and, and their and their place in them and their knowledge of them, that this is a good like gateway vehicle to the universe of EVs. And I think it had such a big impact since 2021. And you're right. Like I see those suckers everywhere. I have to put my own bias aside on this one just for a second because my bias would say I would put it above the uh, I would put it in front of the Cybertruck, okay? But wow. I believe if my bias put this aside, it should be in the A tier just because I see these suckers everywhere. I've seen them all over Virginia, all over California, and now in Colorado. I see these things wherever I go. And mm-hmm. the only other vehicle I had that same impact with was a Model Y or 3. But it ain't no, like, because then when we start to have to, like, fine tooth, like, it, to get the Covenant S spot, you have to get so much right. And there's, and I I don't see the dial thing. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't necessarily. On the screen, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Uh, anyway, look, the, the point is, I don't, it does not. It, I, you're on the council, but we do not grant you the rank of S tier. But I would put it in the A. I would put it in low A. I put it below Roadster and and X. Um, hmm. I I would honestly put it above the Roadster. Ooh. I think it does a lot. I think it does a lot. But I mean, the Roadster helped kickstart. All right, Mike. Let's do it. Uh, I, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, just to summarize my thought there. Sure. This is pretty much so. Tesla's uh, real step into the waters of the EV market was probably the Model S. It was them proving that they can do it again, where the Roadster was like, where it's more mass tried ma- and mass market. people buy it. Yeah. yeah. The Mustang is pretty much the same, but it locks down the price really well. I and agree. of course they have the backing of the legacy auto and all the money that they've had accumulated for century or I guess a century or many, many decades at that point. Yeah. So they do have that edge. But I think they nailed it with what they needed to provide as a crossover EV for the mass market appeal, even though it's got a weird name. And it's built in Mexico, and which isn't bad, except for the fact that the quality isn't the best. And you also can't get tax incentives on it because it's built Ladies in Mexico. and gentlemen, we are both American citizens. I am 
uh proudly team america here and anything that's built in america that see that's one of those covenant s tiered things where i'd be like there you go um but it is ford it has the branding and it is an all i mean again speaking for itself i see them everywhere that's not nothing and that that's not a fluke that's not a mistake that's not by accident that means it's working so you can also charge this thing at superchargers where you can't charge the roadster at superchargers so <laughs> there you go it has ac- the access reason. to the networks and stuff so yeah right i and ford F- now that we're talking about this is the first ford and so i i here's where i'm going to be weighing our other ones here ford was the first legacy to say we will adopt nax and i will commend that always and forever mm-hmm I think Ford made the right choice. They definitely humble up to a lot of the things that should be pushed forward. I mean, yeah, it seems kind of funny where you get the CEO of Tesla saying, hey, we sent everyone how to make a 48 volt architecture and you get the CEO of Ford barking back saying, we got it, we'll be looking over it. <laughs> Just like, yeah, this is, this is kind of strange and weird, but okay, sure, I guess I could buy it. But yeah. uh, at least Ford is willing to change things up and it's not all pretty much a, uh, a a tax write-off at the end of the day. It's seriously a product that people want to buy. And with yeah. that, I think that trickles into the other two vehicles that Ford makes that are electric. The Transit came next, I guess, in the timeline uh, that we're kind of treading here. Uh, the Transit is cool that you can buy it as a customer. I don't know if you can buy the Mercedes uh, eSprinter, which is why it's not on this list because I... It's been hard to verify whether you can or cannot. Uh, same with Rivian. You can't really buy the EDV outright unless it goes right. through a few companies and then they sell it as a private sale or whatever. But with the e-transit, you could buy it on its own. Uh, its range, of course, isn't the best. 115 miles with a 33 kilowatt hour battery. Oh, wait. That's the... <laughs> My bad. That's the Ford Focus Electric. The e-transit gets 126 miles of range with a 77 kilowatt hour battery. That sounds a lot more realistic for a van. Right. Uh, It starts at around $52,000. So as Ford's first electric van for, Um, I guess, a serious product. It dropped the ball when it is following the success of the Mustang Mach-E. Not an A tier. Um, I'd say it deserves to be somewhere in like C tier. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I I, like what you it's it's. It blends in with the rest. So I'm seeing the T, the C tier so, grow so big where it's like it kind of blends in with the rest. So mm-hmm. anywhere really, I, 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 I don't know. Put it, put it in front of the Rolls Royce. Put it behind the Focus. Right. Anywhere in between there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Where did you drop terms, it? Terms. I think I'll put it actually in front of the Mercedes but behind the BMWs. The BMWs are at least somewhat affordable and you get some of that luxury feel, but the transit's all about utility. So there's some balancing act going on in there where I think you can get something a little bit better than Mercedes in terms of electric and luxury. Let's talk lightning. Let's talk the lightning. This thing is (laughs) a little bit controversial in regards to Ford announced it right after the Cybertruck. But it came out, I think, a couple, oh, goodness, in 2022, so two years before the Cybertruck, and has all the things that we wanted in the Cybertruck for ports and plugs and, uh, use, I guess, utility, in which, not saying that the Cybertruck isn't a utility vehicle, you can still do a lot of things with it, but it's not affordable. And that's why I think that the Cybertruck is more like a uh, equivalent to the Ford F-150 Raptor. It's more like a sport, kind of like how Santa Monroe put it. It's more equivalent to a sport truck where the F-150 Lightning is most likely def- the definitive work truck that is electrified or electric. I agree. Okay. So with that. I think it deserves to go low A. I, I was just, yeah, it's above the Cybertruck. <laughs> it's above the Cybertruck, which means... I haven't found something that's above Cybertruck that belongs in B. Uh, Ford, Ford did good. It's not. It's. I can't give it the Covenant S, and it's not better than the Mach. 
E, I, and I would not um, say that it is as revolutionary as the original Roadster. So, bottom A. Low A makes sense. I agree. Cool. All right. Uh, unfortunately, there's no uh, Lincolns to review, but moving on to Volvo, uh, our favorite Swedish we are manufacturer. We used, <laughs> used to be owned by Ford, which is a nice segue as well. Uh, we're going to go with something that hasn't really been talked about and people forget about, the C30 Electric. Uh, this was a kind of like a hatchback-looking Volvo, built in 2012, had a 24-kilowatt-hour battery with a range of around 93 miles. It was, yeah, only sold in America for one year. I think it was sold a little bit longer in Europe. Uh, but MSRP, I think at the time, was like $76,000. Uh, in which incentives helped bring that price down a lot more, but I was able to find that number a lot more definitively than a bunch of others on this list. Okay, okay. astounded me at the price, but makes sense for if uh, you're relying on tax incentives, but it it is kind of expensive. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, they only did a three-year... So that's, I guess, the thing. You couldn't buy this thing. This was a three-year lease. So that $76,000 price wasn't really like it was an equivalent but you can only lease it for three years and uh then you'd pretty much have to give it back it pretty much fell in the same line as what gm did with the ev1 right or what honda did with the uh oh goodness the uh the ev plus that they made back in the late 90s um as much as i fanboy over volvo as a company historically in my life um, this one missed the mark with the lease, with the price, and mm-hmm. with the range for 2012. Um, at most, I am a guy who buys his stuff outright, his phones, his computer, uh, his car. I do not like, I don't like taking out a loan. I don't like paying interest on something. I like buying something once and owning it. Mm-hmm. If you could buy it and own it, I would put it below the focus but I kind of want to put it in the D, to be honest with you. D for don't do I it. I think I'd put it. I would put it below the. Uh, uh, I think I'd put it below the Lucid, but above the Vinfast, only because I believe the uh, the monthly lease with tax and subs included was around two to three hundred dollars a month. Okay, uh, which isn't terrible, but then. Comparing 2012, three. You're just renting something for so long, and I just I don't like leases. I've never you know been shy about that. I don't like renting long term and not keeping it. Um, that's a preference, mm. and I'm went I'm I'm grading it on my preference. I will only concede to the lucid because at least you can own something that isn't real as opposed to renting something that isn't real. So, all right. Coincidentally, it's funny that we put it here because the VinFast's uh, battery is only leased. So we're, we're pretty much putting the leased <laughs> stuff in the D tier right now. Good job, Mike. Hey, I like it. <laughs> Unintentional right. there. Uh, yeah. With that, moving on to the other two Volvos, the XC40 Recharge and the C40 Recharge, now named the EX40 and the EC40, <sighs> for, I think the 2024 model year. Uh, this is the boxy looking thing that uh, is almost uh, Volvo's smallest SUV before they announced the EX30. Right. And the C40 pretty much is the, or the EC40 is pretty much the EX40. So many letters and word or numbers. Uh, pretty much these are the same car, just different uh, chassis shape. Right. So, I mean, so one's it's, a bit more it's negligible uh, the amount of just, it's four miles off. Uh, on on paper and the pricing Mm -hmm. is just you know about a thousand different like i it's negligible i will say this though i like the sportier looking one more the Mm -hmm. the c30 right let me see c40 c40 excuse me c40 i like that one more i i i think it has a cooler design Maybe because it's sportier. I like I like the way it looks in the back more. There's more textures um, to it. It's not as flat and whatever. And, it, you know, it's a year later from the other one. So maybe they had time to kind of like polish it up. And so both of them existing together to me doesn't make sense as a business move. But it is what it is. We're ranking them both because you can buy them both. I think the, uh, the C40 is the only one that should be in existence. 
Um, so mm-hmm. I would rank that one above whatever we put uh, the the uh, X40 on. Um, but they should mm-hmm. be side by side. So like wherever one goes, the other one's right next to it. And I would just give a little edge, a little bump to the C40. And with that, I like them. I don't hate them. The number for we can get it at uh, just shy of 300 miles. Mm-hmm. I, I think these deserve to be above the Coda, in my opinion. Below the Cybertruck, above the Coda in B tier. Let's do it. Yeah, that I agree. Yeah. Whoop. There we go. Uh, yeah, I guess one other thing to add to that, if you're not too familiar with the pricing, it's fifty-two and 53000 for these vehicles. And uh, was it? They, they got single motor and dual motor options. And they're they're decent looking. I've ridden in the XC40, or no, I've been inside one. I haven't driven it, and it's not bad. But I think the upcoming EX30 and EX90 are really going to steal that spotlight, or at least be the more uh, alluring cars mm-hmm. that might just throw you into these other cars if you can't handle the price or the compactness of them. I love a good compact. I know it's un-American to say that, but I I do. Compact is, I've always, I mean, I'm the guy who had a Civic, not an Accord. I had a Scion TC over, uh, I forget the other Scion at the time. Uh, I had a Jetta over the, I forgot the other one. Whatever, it was paired up to something else. I I got the three over the Y. Now, granted, the Y didn't exist then, but I got the three over the S. I, I will always go compact over these big I know it's more roomy inside but I, I don't you're if I'm I'm the driver I'm driving these things I I set my seat away from the steering wheel at the same distance no matter what vehicle I drive everything else is just I don't care I just don't care so if I take efficiency and have easier parking tighter turns better range mm-hmm. okay then I'll do that makes sense to me uh, let's move on to their luxurious uh, counterpart that spun off into its own company, the Polestar. Uh, specifically, Polestar at this time has only made the Polestar 2 available. It's only been around since, well, I guess it's been around since 2021, so it precedes the EX40 and EC40 in their current day look, because they started uh, being produ- produced in the 2022 and 2023. Polestar 2's in 2021. I got to drive this thing. I think it's put together really well. It's integration with Google is great for my experience of moving around the UI. Uh, you can now, I think with the recent dual motor ones, you can disengage the front axle. Okay. So you can get better range and efficiency with it, which is a big plus. And you also get vented seats with it for pretty much the same price as you a can man get after my for own heart. a Model Y, or it's a little bit more expensive than a Model 3. So Model 3 has now been... But it's uh, cheaper than the EX40 or EC40. Yes. It is a sedan, though, compared to a uh, crossover SUV. Okay. So there is some of that justification. I think this deserves to be... Uh, I think above the Volvos, but below the Cybertruck. I, Maybe even above the Cybertruck. I was going to say really above the Cybertruck. Be- this is the top B-class vehicle for me i love this thing i i think it's got great styling polestar's got really good looks for i love the design i love the logo i'm a sucker for logos uh and i know it's all trivial it doesn't matter but you know i love rivian for the same thing i love their like it's clean looking i i like i haven't heard anybody say anything bad for like i don't want a tesla but i do want X, Y, and Z, and Polestar fits that for me. Uh, I know one person, IRL, who has driven, and I don't know if they ended up buying it or if they're in the works of buying it, but they're they're like all about it. And mm-hmm. um, I was like, okay, that's cool. And like you said, it's spinoff from Volvo that was, you know, it became its own thing. It's, I like, I just, I like it. I like it. Uh, I, I even like yeah. the little, and I know it's childish, but I like the, the little cheap shots they took at Tesla that one Super Bowl where they're like, no talks of going to Mars, but like, look, we're just making a car, okay? <laughs> like, I like it, okay? I, I like the banter. It's fun. It's competitive, and uh, it's the first thing I think that we can buy out there. I feel it is 
on par but slightly above Cybertruck. Yeah, if Tesla is kind of the Apple of the EV space, the Polestar is definitely the definitive Android that you should compare it to and cross shop with it. Even though it's a little bit pricier, it's got a lot of great features to boot. This is a Pixel or a Galaxy. It's it's one of them those two. It's like it's up there. Pretty much. Okay. All right. We're out of the Volvo Polestar forest. Now we're yeah. in the General Motors forest with the Chevys. <laughs> um, thankfully, there's not too many uh, that, as far as I can tell, are on sale today, but it's still a considerable chunk. Uh, we've got the Spark that I think we should start out with. Uh, of course, GM is uh, controversial in the EV space with killing off the EV1, pretty much prying the EV1 out of people's arms, and then... Uh, also made, an, I think, an S10 pickup at the time. But then decided later, around 2013, we're going to make the Spark that uh, is a gas vehicle. Let's put a battery in it, specifically, a, I think, around a 21.3 kilowatt hour battery. That takes it around 82 miles of range, which right. not terrible, not good. Uh, but at least it, it, it pretty much is, the, if you're thinking about a lineage of cars, you had the EV1 and the S10 is kind of a branch off. This is the uh, successor to the EV1. Yeah. It's the, not the swan song, but at least it's a continuation of that idea <laughs> and GM trying to test the waters again. And I, I say... Also, it's, I think it was mainly a compliance car as well. My bias with it that I like, and I don't like much about it, it reminds me of my wife's Yaris. So <laughs> that's cool. You know, there's my little... There's my bias there. Uh, for for what it is, and, and I, just, I just don't really care for GM like that, given its history, given that it, it was just in 2013, is it? Yeah, 13. <sighs> 2013, 26,000 to buy, and you don't even get, you don't even break the 100 mark. Um, I think eh. it deserves to be somewhere around the Arkhamoto, like above Mini Cooper, because Mini Cooper has a Chadmo. This thing started the CCS craze, or at least I believe it was the first production vehicle with a CCS plug in it, in okay. which you could take that as it is compared to 2024, 2023, when everyone was jumping on the next bandwagon. But this thing got CCS to the public, yeah. which I think is great because that furthered EV adoption and a standardized port in some way, but uh, pretty much was a compliance car in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I put, put put it above the the Mini Cooper. All righty, let's do that then. Uh, moving on to actually, pretty much the next vehicle in that family tree, the successor to the Spark. With a weird history. <laughs> With a very weird history. Uh, you've heard about it catching on fire. It had really weird looks. It was the Volt Killer, and uh, didn't really have good proportions, in my opinion, compared to the Volt. We're talking about the Chevy Bolt, and which recently came with the compact version, and then introduced the EUV, which was a little bit more of a crossover version right. of it. Okay. We, we've talked a lot about this in previous episodes, so we won't linger too hard on this. What I will say, and what I do give it, is that um, for it... like it, I want to judge it on 2016, since that was the first launch, but then 2022. So we're just going to kind of like... It has such a weird history, but what I'm, where I'm getting at is for a sub thirty thousand dollar vehicle, and you get over two hundred and fifty miles. That is, uh, that's 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 status quo, or even in some cases, it could be above status quo because of the pricing of it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, at this point in time in the history, in the in the in the early twenty twenties, anything under two fifty is just Loud, like no that's silly don't do that but then when we talk about the price the price does matter and being sub 30 grand not a car i would buy not one for me but it is your cheapest barrier of entry into the ev market that's not nothing i would put that i, I would maybe give it high the, the highest c or somewhere maybe low b like the lowest b somewhere right there I'd probably put it right behind the Volvos, but above the Coda, because it's okay. still being supported by a Chevy. You can get them to dealerships. You can get them at a really good price. They, I don't think they sell new ones anymore, because they, or at least they stopped production in 2023. They're, I, 
I believe there's none being produced anymore because we're in 2024. But apparently it's supposed to if come back. If it comes back, look, pack. it's going to be another weird part of its history. They keep killing it and bringing it back, killing it and bringing it back. It's, it's the Google. It's, it's the mm-hmm. Google product of something. So It's really weird history, and it's going to be even weirder if they do bring it back because its successor is the Equinox EV, and I believe the Blazer as well kind of fits into that as well. Those, yeah. I can't tell if they're being mass-produced yet, or at least the Blazer is a little bit rougher to try to figure out. The Equinox, I believe, they're still trying to spin up production. But having all the, four of those vehicles being produced by GM seems really strange to me. So I, I've i got mixed feelings on whether they bring it back or not. But at least for what they were in the 2016 to 2021 and the 2022 to 2023 run, they're a really great car to buy if you want something that's cheap and gets you places in the city. And you, you could probably stretch to going out of the city to another city or on a small adventure and back. Yeah. And uh, they, the most recent battery upgrade makes it so it doesn't catch on fire <laughs> as easily. So it's it's not a bad buy, in my opinion. It's just it's got a really rough road that it had to travel on in its life. Yeah. Awesome. I think now we come to the infamous vehicles that I actually saw two of uh, yesterday. I saw two Hummer EV SUVs on the road, one in white, I'm one sorry. in the green. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> These things, there's a reason why we have a tier called the Hummer EV tier in our tier list. I'm not too sure why GM decided to bring these things back. Under, I think, the GMC brand, uh, which makes sense because they killed off the uh, the Hummer brand. It's just, how, I don't know how you responsibly build a 246 kilowatt hour truck slash SUV that only goes around 330 miles of range. It's insane. With that price point, people, the the Hummer EV exists for people who don't know anything about EVs and don't know how to do any research. And they're people, those are the people that dealerships take advantage of. Like the the Hummer EV is, is the balancer for all the people who know how to do smart buying and like, well, we still got to make money and just throw them. Like if you're a billionaire who just don't care about mine don't have to think about it nothing like that you get a hummer ev just because you don't know no different but for all of us <laughs> just you know where they go crown them their tier these things scare the nhtsa and other people that are concerned about automobile crashes with other <laughs> automobiles or people it is a giant brick wall on wheels yeah, it's the heaviest vehicle produced. That's an EV, and uh, what, I guess the only good thing about it is recently, uh, I think in the last few months, it was revealed that they had a hundred and eighty percent increase in production. So they're not building two of them a month anymore, like they did last year. It seems like they've ramped production quite well to where it's no longer a group of people in the corner of the factory trying to build these things as fast as they can. They've actually got a proper production line for it, which I think is irresponsible but great that they got it off the ground i guess yeah oh my goodness all right well they sit there uh this time we've got the suv to provide the truck some company let's move on to cadillacs only as far as i can tell i don't think the celestic is out yet it's kind of hard to tell that giant boat if it's uh in customer hands yet because they're very uh selective on who they give it to but with the Lyric, it's another luxury crossover <laughs> that's an EV on the yep. market. Cadillac which- was one of my grandma's uh, favorite brand, and she had a Cadillac. And I didn't mm-hmm. understand the the appeal back then. A little bit more now, because I don't see limos anymore. And Cadillacs are your modern-day limo. Like that's Those are the people who get chauffeured around. But mm-hmm. Cadillac is a luxury brand and for this car this ev coming out last year uh i was and still am shocked that it's only you know fifty eight thousand. it is insane and that's not with uh incentives included 
that and... that's very weird to me and mm-hmm. uh, just for on a specs piece of thing like and, and it's over 300 miles uh, on a, like i just well it has that, 100 kilowatt hour battery attached to it as well so yeah it's there's it's, a lot of luxurious elements pumped into this thing but at least it goes over 300 miles and eventually it'll have the next port so there are some silver linings with this thing but i i, I don't really the styling is okay-ish in my opinion i like what the front is doing sure the back is kind of confusing but i i think it go i don't know where to put i don't want to put more things in c tier i don't think it deserves to be in b tier i don't think it deserves to be in d tier so i think it's somewhere in c tier i would i would put this in Front or behind focus, Ford Focus? Interesting. I I would say then, if we're doing that, putting it behind the focus. And oh. maybe in front of the i3. Or maybe even... In I front of the i3. The i3. I, I, I would put it in front of the i3. Um, okay. Well, uh, because I, the i3 is not being sold right now. It's really that's, that's not good. yet. Apparently, it might be coming back, but with a new look. Well, we'll, we'll refresh our our list then. I it's not being sold now, and it's over three hundred miles. It's under eighty thousand dollars for a luxury. It's just it's it's weird that it's it's cheap for its tier like tier class as in like its its status symbol. A, a Cadillac to me is a very high end, bougie, fancy, but it just. I don't know. I, I mm-hmm. I'm impressed. I am. I, I get what you say. I, I like it doesn't it doesn't belong in D. No way. I don't know if it should be in B. It doesn't feel. There's nothing like wow about it being in B. But to put it in C also feels like it's a disrespect. <laughs> I, I, top C, like it's right there. I, I focus is more more. Um, that just made more sense. That's an everyday. Mm-hmm. That's an everyman vehicle. Whereas a Cadillac is a luxury. So. That's a toss-up for me, but yeah, I, I'd, I would put in front of the i3, and yeah, we're good. Well, that was General Motors. Goodbye. Uh, or, yeah, <laughs> goodbye, GM, <laughs> please. With that, let's move on to a, uh, a parent company that I'm actually quite excited for and what they're producing, and they're doing a pretty good job. The Hyundai Motor Group specifically, let's, I guess, start with Kia since they started off with the Soul EV back in... 2014 and we're producing it or at least delivering it in america until 2019 um of course it's a big box on wheels so it's not going to get the best aero efficiency or at least efficiency in general is getting around 243 uh, at the end of its life with a 30 kilowatt hour battery which is really good so i might have to do a little bit more research into trying to figure out how it's getting 243 miles with a 30 kilowatt hour battery there might be a mistake there but uh, this felt like a compliance car in regards to how... I don't think the price that I've gotten here is correct. I said $20,000. But um, I think it's still sold in Europe. And it used the Chadmo plug, I think, with the first gen. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not vibing with it, really. I never really vibed with the sole vehicles from Kia. The short answer, just so we move the list along, is I agree. I don't vibe with it. That's the short right. answer. Let's put it then. I think High D. High D. Because uh, it's a good parent maybe, company still. <laughs> it's still a good parent company, but uh, I think C is getting a little bit too big. But yeah. not even that justification. I think people would pass C, up the soul. C, for... I, would, I, I can make a case for anybody who, if they're like, I want the... Cooper, or I want a Bolt, or uh, what? Like I could be like I can C is a tier that I could be like, all right, yeah, that's it's fine, it's okay, it's it's mm-hmm. it's the, well, the Mini has brand power in my opinion. People can recognize a Mini and get excited. I don't yeah. think people recognize a Kia Soul. Well, even if they do, it's like uh, you know what I mean. Like it, here's the thing, because we you know that we're we're grading it on other Kia vehicles that are nowhere near the D tier. No, rest that we're gonna 
uh, evaluate from them are so a lot more exciting. Yeah, let's get into that. Like the D is right. D. That, that's appropriate for the soul. Let's let's get into the the fun stuff. Yeah, I, I guess slowly going into it, ramping into it. The Nero is something that people don't realize that. I think Hyundai makes Europe definitely recognizes it is I believe their fifth m most popular vehicle if I'm correct uh, they sell it here in America they've been selling it since 2019 it's gone through a couple facelifts and it's a great price with 250 miles of range and I was it forty thousand dollars starting price for MSRP yeah. and you get good dimensions for like what you want to pack into it and and I, 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 here's why it's going to be high on my list. I'm going to just say it. It supports the next gen CarPlay. It's already been announced that it will support it. And it also is one of the very few vehicles that has the um, key card, digital card for like an iPhone. So in your wallet app, you can pull up the card. It's one of the few keyless entry where your phone is the key. And there is no like, and it's its own little car. It's its thing to kind of counteract what Tesla does, but in its own little collaboration with Apple. And so there's synergy here. I at a at a better price than most. I I like that uh, Nero is 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 where it's at. So I would the lowest I would be willing to to say is somewhere in the B, like low B is. Sure. In the B. I think it deserves to be. I think it's a sleeper hit, in my opinion. I think I agree. more people need to. I think they need to market this a little bit more in the Kia group. So, I might put it above the. Ooh, maybe below the bolts, but I think it deserves better. I think I, they need I to agree. It has. I think it just needs a little bit more oomph from with, the with, with the right amount of attention on it, it. It would blow the bolts out of the water. I believe its charging port is also on the front of it, so whenever they get the NAX port, easy integration, no matter what uh, charging station you go to, it'll be easy to plug in. Okay. So it's got pretty good future-proofing in regards to recharging the thing. Let's move on to something that you were cross-shopping for a while, Dude, Randy. I'm going to just say it right EV6. now. A. A. Strong A. This <laughs> this is... this. I, I don't want to say S because it's... I have to be... Fi Ugh! it's over 300 <laughs> miles it's under 45,000 at the time it's a clean vehicle never mind you that there's maybe tactile buttons inside the cabin or whatever the, all those aesthetic choices it doesn't matter just talking about what it does this is not a sleeper this is this is a disruptor mm -hmm. it's either the highest of A's or very 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 low S I don't know it's it's, wow. I will not compromise any lower than a, the highest of an A. This blows the X out. Just I agree. Okay. What, where Mainly do we put it Mainly because they also offer, I'm putting it above the X. Okay. It's at the top of A tier. <laughs> the next highest is the R1S. And I think the EV6 is probably Kia's bread and butter for something that can charge really quickly. Uh, I believe 20 to 80 and 18. Sorry, twenty percent to eighty percent in eighteen minutes. Something like something that. Something like that. Something like uh, that. Yeah. It has Dude, great I did styling. so much research on this a couple years ago, where, mm -hmm. like, this is my, for, ladies and gentlemen listening or watching. I before I owned my Model Y, this is what the Model Y had to contend with. And if it wasn't for those tax credits, if it wasn't for the price, if it wasn't for certain elements of this thing, um, charging network, f charging network, I. I was so close to getting an EV6 and mm -hmm. that I feel like I don't compromise on, on the values of what I look for in a vehicle and going off of our own admission of our tiers here. I only buy S tier and <laughs> I didn't buy this. So maybe it's the highest of A's, but I would put it like, oh, it's so good. So far we haven't had a legacy auto make it into the S tier and maybe that maybe that's by by design but I will tell you I don't know of a better more universally accepted legacy EV than the EV6. Mm -hmm. Full stop. I agree. Uh it also comes was it they have the EV6 I think performance or GT that they're now selling as well which has some really great specs and which I don't have in front of me unfortunately. Uh but Man, uh, 
it's got drift mode. It's got a HUD. I think the only thing it doesn't have really going for it that well with the integration of NACS is its port is on the back right. So it's going to be a little bit tricky trying to get this thing to plug in uh, easily at every single supercharger that you visit with it when it's got that port, or at least when it's got an adapter. But otherwise, styling is great. I've kind of turned a new leaf when comparing it to the Ionic, in which we'll get to the Ionic soon. Very soon. Uh, the Ionic 5. I've warmed up more to the EV6 over time. Uh, not just for styling, but what it can do. So I think I agree. High A. This thing totally deserves it. Its older brother just came out as well. The EV9. Let's talk about it. Is, it's pretty much an electrified Telluride. It's got three rows. This thing does what the R1S can't in terms of price. And it's a boxier design, which means you get a whole lot more interior space than the R1S. In terms of a human fitting into the seat and feeling how much space they have around them in their immediate area. Uh, it's got that going for it. The weird thing about it that uh, a reviewer, uh, I believe, what uh, the auto guide, I'll, I'll link him right here. I'll put uh, uh, something that refers to his recent review that turned me on to this very funny fact. Each row has a different headrest, which is really strange. The front row, has like a perforated look on its headrest. The second row kind of has vertical lines on it. And the third row is just a solid like pad for the headrest for the occupants. It's really strange. I'm not too sure why they made that choice. Maybe it's just for uh, manufacturing or production purposes, or they're reusing it from another vehicle or something like that. Really strange. I think this thing is a great buy for those that need three rows and need to pack in a whole bunch of people. The space is all right for those, of course, in the third row. It's kind of hard to fit a whole bunch of people into a three-row vehicle that isn't an Escalade. <laughs> but uh, I think the EV9 does a lot of things right. I'm not as familiar with the EV9, so okay, I'm listening to you. It's very it's interesting to hear. Sure. Uh, it comes in around $56,000 MSRP starting. Uh, just started production. You could get, there's so many of these. I saw a few of them at a local supercharger that was right by a uh, Kia dealership. And uh, with a range of around 304 miles for a whole lot of people that you need to cart around or it's got a whole bunch of space for things that you could put into it. I think it's a really good uh, contender to if you want to get something that can haul a lot, but you're not willing to buy an EV truck. Or a small where, crossover. When you say contender, in what tier does it contend with? I think it deserves to be in the A tier. This thing is revolutionary in like utility, in my opinion. Even though it doesn't have the best range, it can tow a decent amount. It can haul a decent amount of people or things in it. And it still achieves 300 miles of range. Is it in front and or behind the Model X then? I would say it goes behind the Model X in front of the Mach E. Ooh. Only this is probably part of my American roots of big vehicle <laughs> gets Ooh. big two thumbs up. But the colors on this are amazing, and let's see, fifty six will be able to charge. for EV nine, and mm -hmm. Mach E is forty three. But I know I'm, I, they're obviously different. Uh, you get an extra row. There's extra tax row. incentives included with this thing. They just started producing this thing. and The range is not that far off uh, from each other, mm -hmm. both over 300. All right. It's I, just whether you I, want performance I, I, or you want I'll go with you on utility. this one because I, I know so little of the e, EV9. I, I will say that's fine then. Yeah. It makes sense to me to put in front of the Maki -E only because I put utilization or utility over performance. I, in which I like that matrix. Okay, I trust you. That that works. I think that's what gets it for me. All right, let's get out of the Kia. Into the Hyundai group, or at least we're in the Hyundai group, but specifically the Hyundai vehicles. Um, a lot of people don't remember this, but the Ionic Five wasn't the first Ionic car. It was the Hyundai Ionic being the first Ionic car. Shocking. Uh, this thing was pretty. Yeah, I know, right? It, I didn't realize that it was produced from all the way up until 2022, but it started in 2016, uh, had a range of around 170 miles on a 28 kilowatt hour battery. 
and it was for between 2017 and 2019, EPA's rated most fuel efficient tested vehicle that they've seen. Um, the weird thing about it is it didn't really have regen. You can only pull paddles that were behind the steering wheel to activate regen. And there's a bunch of different settings you can put, I think four different settings. And the looks weren't amazing because it's a lot more aero efficient and all that. But it was Hyundai's, I would say, first realistic step into the EV waters, and they did a decent job with it. I know more about the Ionic 5 and 6, so I, I don't know. I can't really add much to it. I think this goes at top of C, in my opinion. I think it did a great job for the brand. I think it it's a better buy than the Honda, or the, sorry, the Honda, the Ford Focus Electric. Okay. And it's a great city car. And it doesn't cost as much these days compared to, of course, when it did back in the day. And you can get a pretty good used ones. And it's got a whole bunch of service centers to help tune it up or fix any issues with it. And it's not going to be as costly to fix compared to, like, a Lyric. Okay, next one. This would be the Kona, which okay. is, again, I think part of that sleeper hit that the, uh, the Nero is in. People don't really think about the Kona and Nero as much. These are kind of like Model Y contenders, but I think they're, they're, their competition's more aimed at gas vehicles. And the Kona has gone through, I think, three or four different redesigns. It's kind of insane how many redesigns it's gone through. The most recent one makes it look very futuristic with uh, two uh, daytime running lights that almost do a... almost looks like the Nexo that they make uh, with a whole uh, width-spanning running light. But it looks very futuristic. The styling's really cool. It pretty much is just the Hyundai version of the Kia's Nero. Which means it should be right next to it. I think so. I would say in terms of styling, it's much better than the Kona. Or sorry, the Kona's much better than the Nero. Uh, and Sure, all right, put it I in front of it. it. I think they just need to improve the technology in it a little bit more. Okay. But keep it maybe at the price that's at around uh, thirty-two thousand dollars. All right, I'm not going to hold any punches on this, and I'm going to move quick with it. But uh, simply put, Ionic Five. Next one here. This thing is a one-for-one, toe-to-toe with EV6. Um, everything that I was just raving about EV6, uh, I could translate and equate to the Ionic Five. There's little differences inside the cabin that you can um, point out and you'll notice. But all in all, mm -hmm. for what it is, um, I don't have anything innately wrong, bad, or or even uh, discouraging about Ionic 5. Um, they're so spec to spec. I would put it right behind the EV6 because I think the EV6 is just a better overall. I like the way it looks. I like everything about it more. So mm -hmm. that's what I say. The EV6 is the more refined version, in my opinion, of the Ionic 5. And which makes sense because the Ionic 5 came out before the EV6. So Kia got to see what Hyundai was doing with the Ionic 5 and make something just a little bit better. Yeah. I think Kia's supposed to be a little bit more expensive than Hyundai. So, makes sense that they went for a little bit more luxurious look and feel. Sure. But it has a whole lot more going for it, I think, than the Ionic 5. But the Ionic 5, with its pixel-looking right. design, is pretty funny. It's very unique. You know what you're looking at when it's on the road. And it won't blend. It, it's not going to blend in. <laughs> you, in terms you, of you like, know what you're looking at when you see it on the road. You're like, oh, look at that. Every time, every time my wife sees it, she points it out. Like To me, that's like, all right. Branding at, at work here. It's working. So... Mm -hmm. It uh, also has great charging as well and decent range. So yeah. I think that's why it deserves to be a top of A as well. Next, EV. The Ionic 6. I don't know. I, I kind of want to learn more about your opinions about this because I don't know if I've actually heard it or yeah. I might need a refresher on how you feel about the Ionic 6. I think this is a great car, Randy. You can get these leased pretty well at dealerships if you want to for really good prices. But it's got amazing efficiency and a the sedan body. The specs alone are completely like it. Honda is doing Honda. I think like it, it. I got it's great. This is a this is a an amazing vehicle. I if that's the body 
if that's the, the you know the style of EV you're looking for, if you're not looking for a crossover, if you're not looking for you know like a, each they, it serves its purpose in its in its lane in its product category of choice. I think this is a great vehicle, phenomenal range. Uh, for you can use your phone or your watch if you have an Apple product to unlock it, which I think is really cool. It is. Um, it's right there with EV6 Ionic 5. It's the same. Th- it's I got. This is. Top. I think it deserves to be above the Ionic 5, in my opinion. I, if you want something I, that has a whole bunch of range, and still retains. This is a newer product, right? This, is, this came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it makes it, but it's it's newer. It's it's more refined. It's it's the next iteration of Ionic. It can go above Ionic it's, 5. I mean, if you're cross shopping, it's just do you want the sedan? Or the hatchback crossover. Well, what, what what did I tell you, Mike? If I always given the choice, I go with a more compact design. Yeah, so you would go then with the Ionic Five, but I'd say the Ionic Six with a substantial increase in range, even though that maybe the design isn't as alluring as the Ionic Five, being a little bit more boxier and square. Even though that the Ionic Six still carries around the pixel theme with it. I think it's a really amazing product for the price point. Give me one second here. The, it's only a thousand dollars more. I, I, Ionic Six is not m- more boxier. No, the Ionic Six is sleeker. The Ionic yes. Five is boxier. Yeah. Maybe I misspoke earlier. Then. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, you had that switched. Ionic Six, okay. I think, is a more stylish designed vehicle. Gotcha. I, I would go with that. All that to say, I put in front of the Five. Agreed. All right, next. All right. On this same platform that we've been talking about that we, we didn't really acknowledge, the EGMP platform uh, with the, oh, goodness, I think, yeah, all of them that we've been talking about have been on the EGMP platform. Now with Genesis, uh, they've got a really weird lineup, but the one that they are pretty much marketing and touting a lot more than the rest of their EVs is the GV60. Looks pretty pretty much like a Genesis version of what the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6 are. I I'm, I want to just interject really quickly, Mike, and say that please. these vehicles, to me, I don't know much about them. I, I would feel more, I would be better if we just kind of categorize them all at once, the way we did sure. the the, uh, the BMWs, no, the Mercedes, uh, just because... I would say my, these go in high B, in my opinion. High Maybe B. Probably, maybe middle B. Give me a second. Because they don't offer enough in range, in my opinion. That's what I was about to say. And looking at it, and with the pri- but you could do middle middle B. Okay, never mind. Well, yeah, two two forty two ninety four two eighty two and two thirty six for the GV sixty EG eighty and the EGV seventy. <laughs> for those that aren't familiar, it, that's electrified or the GV sixty, the electrified GV eighty. In the electrified GV70, um, that is in that order: a compact, a sedan, and an SUV. Um, I would say th- they're trying, and they're okay. I- I'd probably put it at the bottom of the B. Actually, thinking about, I was going to say, but I put them below uh, Chevy. That's what below I was Chevy. So, it, yeah, okay, I think so as well. Yeah below below the 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 bolts just just on a price point thing for me right all right with that moving on to probably the one i might hate most in this maybe not hates a strong word the one i dislike the most in this list mazda specifically the mx30 this is the definition of a compliance car and to hammer this home even more 100 miles of range with a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery for $34,000, not including incentives. This was discontinued because of slow sales. And a nice little asterisk at the bottom of this, they only sold less than or around 600 units, specifically only in California. They didn't want to sell anywhere else, specifically only in California. And its second row is abysmal. Uh, the... Second row doors are can only open when the first row doors open. It's kind of that weird, like uh, kind of like the old Fords or Chevy uh, trucks, where you have to open the front door before you open the back door. That opens up like a suicide door. 
this thing I think fits into the Hummer EV category. Whoa. I was going to say E, but I think a Fisker Ocean is much better than an MX-30. I would rather buy a Fisker Ocean five times over than an MX-30. This thing is horribly depressing as a product. No, put it, it doesn't make sense. That put put it put it with the Hummer. It, Hummer at the end of the day is that tier is this does not make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's profitable or not, whether it's bankrupt or not, whether it's still in ra- around or not, like it just at the end of the day it doesn't make sense. So go ahead. All right, we'll put it in the Hummer. All right. See ya, Mazda. Bye, Moving Mazda. on, we we are now in. <laughs> I didn't realize that this group existed. The Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance. Uh or just it, Nissan. <laughs> or just Nissan. We will just talk about Nissan here. Uh specifically we'll start it with the one that pretty much started it all for the revolution in EVs in America. The Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf is by all accounts the <sighs> it, because it started it all it has to be it, it it cemented its its place in history mhm it had weird looks but it was the best selling ev until the model 3 came around and i have to i like just the fact that like it's it's role in all of this it's in, it's importance nothing that i personally would buy but it being a, I have to put it in S. I have to. You have to put it really just because it. I think that cultural significance is something to be uh, recognized. None of these other cars would have seen the light of day. Maybe Tesla being the exception. I just like it. It did what others were not willing to do. It dared mm-hmm. to do what everyone else was too scared to do. It was, I think it took a compliance car a lot more seriously, almost maybe too seriously to where it became its own line and its own icon, in my opinion. And yeah, the first gen looks very weird with its curves. They spiced it up in the second gen. Uh, I think in the, it's been around since 2010. I've seen a Nissan Leaf since I was active duty in the Marine Corps, and that was a very, very long time ago. This and thing's been around for a while, and it's ending its production year this year, unfortunately. Yep. Being replaced by something a little bit better. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's evolution doing its thing, but... it's. I too, think this thing deserves a whole bunch of flowers for... It's pretty much, in my opinion... It walked so everyone else could run yeah. in it the got, modern day It got day mocked, EVs. but it outshined... But even the Prius couldn't escape with the ridicule. It did. It did so much. I, I, I ha, it just, it's historic importance of it all. I asked here. That's that's my that's my vote. Okay. Bottom S. I think even though S. its spe- its specs are, of course, for those that aren't familiar with it, two hundred fifteen miles of range for a sixty two kilowatt hour battery. At around twenty nine thousand dollars, it's pretty much in that Chevy Bolt area. Yeah, but that's of... the thing. It, th- th- this is one of those things where I like I, I don't really care about the specs because there would be no Bolt without the Leaf. There would be no n- none. It is the only legacy automobile worthy of S tier that made that paved the way for definitely all the other legacy uh, auto and all these startups. It. It's nothing I would buy, nothing I think is the most delicious design, nothing like that. But it is just too important. None of these other ones, everything below this t- below this vehicle on the chart would not exist if it wasn't for the Leaf. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So, yeah. This All is right. getting its placement only because of that, in my opinion. I agree. The specs aren't really commendable, but it did everything it could to... I guess redefine what people in America saw as an EV and what others could do to improve on it. Yeah. So it definitely is that springboard platform for everyone else. 
uh, with that, it's not really successor, but side sexer, side sessor. Uh, side I don't think that's sexer. even a word. Uh, <laughs> The Nissan Aria took way too long to come out. I think COVID was definitely uh, its bane in its beginning existence with the chip shortage, uh, some production issues delaying the launch. And I, I, I've been in one of these. I haven't driven it. I've been in it. The interior is interesting, and I see them around town. I, I, would, I don't know if I'd buy this over like maybe a bolt i think this sits comfortably like in between the bolts and the hyundai and kia because I it, it offers that shocked. luxury in the looks that's but... a lot higher than i was gonna give it just because okay i i thought maybe top c bottom b I'll do, I'll do bottom b i'll do it's 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 at the very very bottom for me for B. It gets 300 that, miles of range, but that's with a 90 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, and it's 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 okay. It's it's, it's it costs 40,000. So it's a it's C plus B minus, you know? Like it's not It's okay, but for 2023 going for I I, I don't know. I, I don't there's nothing There's nothing I'm going to be like this 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 is okay. It seems too too harsh. Yeah, it's I, I would put it... I think it deserves to be above the Genesis because okay. it is we'll a lot that. better in design. And also, I think it's on the same platform. <laughs> I think it might be on the eGMP platform if I'm correct. It might not it's be. It's above it, Genesis. It looks, I think it's above Genesis. Um, you can maybe cross... The Coda is... It's kind of hard to compare it to the Coda in this circumstance because it's totally different uh, circumstances plague them. But I think it has a little bit more appeal and style than the Kona and the Nero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that's why I think it needs to be a little bit above. And it's got 300 miles range. So it's overall, that, I that, think, a That's right product. below Bolt, right? That's below Bolt? Below Bolt, above Nero and Kona in the B tier. Okay. All right. You swayed me. Yep. Uh, something that is forgotten in this group is Mitsubishi, and specifically their attempt at electric car with the i Miev, uh, or Miev, or i. It's got many different names that it's gone through. This thing, surprisingly, was produced from 2011 to 2017. Uh, it was built, I think, on a K car uh, platform, but then was extended in size for America. And it gets an abysmal 62 miles of range for a 16 kilowatt hour battery, which I guess isn't too bad. But I, this is pretty no, much the definition of a city car. This this doesn't make sense to me. Um, Ooh, really? For thirty thousand dollars, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I it just thirty thousand uh, dollars in 2011. Okay going to 2017 it's been around for six years it doesn't make sense to me price um, changes over time but still i don't know i don't know i wouldn't say hummer ev but i would put I it think it deserves f. d d or e tier D, 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 yeah, d, maybe do, do e then because i wanted to say f okay yeah. i think it's it's better than the endurance and f tier but i don't think it deserves to be better than the fisker ocean and the Faraday Future FF91 in E tier. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> That's it. It just I don't I don't get you. I think it can do a lot better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fiat. Uh, with that, yeah, Fiat. Uh, we're getting into the Stellantis uh, vehicles, and I think the Fiat's the only electric Stellantis vehicle that they're making so far uh, in America. But specifically, this has been around since 2012. Took a hiatus between 2019 and now uh, today. Yeah, yeah. It just got a redesign. That's why I've got on the tier list the redesign look of it. Uh, it still doesn't really have the best specs. I, I guess 149 miles of range isn't bad for something that's got a 42 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, Shout out for product red focus. though. It is part of the product red. And yes, if, if you don't it, know. 
it is that product red stamp where uh, funds go towards HIV and, uh, oh goodness, is it? AIDS? AIDS, yeah. AIDS and HIV support. Not support, supporting them, but supporting <laughs> research. Everybody should fixing. get HIV AIDS. No, 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 oh, no, goodness. no. Don't hit me, YouTube. I'm joking. <laughs> that was mocking it. Here's the thing. Um, I'm a little biased. I like Fiat. I like how weird it is. I like the design of it. Mm. I like its Italian heritage. I like, I like Fiat, and I like that I saw them everywhere in Rome. <laughs> I just, I, I don't. I'm biased here a little bit. It's not great range. It's not great nothing. But um, it, even the photo itself it the has most... it at the Colosseum. I like that. I just noticed the photo itself is it posing at the Colosseum. I. I just think it's a cool car, you know. It's it's there's something fun about it. It's fun if the, if you had f u money and you could just what like over the Hummer, definitely. Like this is just a cool car. I it I know it comes people, in three trims, by the way. It comes in it's three got trims. The pro, yeah, the product red trim is the base trim. You can get in what you do, Randy, the music trim. So it's a special edition. I think it's gold or something ooh, like that, ooh, ooh, ooh. or. It's either gold or black, and then there's the beauty trim, which is either gold or black. Um, so it does have some upgrades, but pretty much they've streamlined the production for this thing, so it's easy to produce. I think it's the most beautiful city car that you can get for something yes. that is compact, easy to park, doesn't really go that far, but it doesn't need to. And it actually can justify in terms of looks and utility. And size, I I just like it. This is a car, not that like it's mocking itself, but I feel like it just it doesn't take itself seriously like that. Like it knows what it is, and it's good. It's I just it's like also it. not backing down. It's back. <laughs> That's right. They, they just and, keep on making this thing. And I can see I can see these little hamster, you know, guinea pig looking things just dancing around this thing, like it's nobody's you know business. Since was that Fiat? Yeah. Oh yeah. I thought that was yeah. the Soul. The Kia Soul had the hamsters. What? No, I thought that was Fiat, wasn't it? No, you might be right. Whatever. Point is... <laughs> Where do you think this goes? Mm, this is tricky because, like you said, you, you said one spot on thing is that like it's the best city car for what it is. Mm. And that's the only part where it's practical to buy. Looking at our lineup... I, it's such a cop out. I don't want C to be a catch all, but I want it to. I like, think it's a B tier. I think it's a low B tier, in my opinion. All right, let's do it. Let's do low B. I think though. it's at the. It's got the style. It doesn't match up to the specs of it's what mostly everything fun. is in B tier, but um, it's fun. It's got just. It's got pizzazz. It does. <laughs> yeah, I think that's commendable for it. Uh, moving on to something that doesn't have pizzazz, and something <laughs> that I think also deserves to be in the Hummer EV tier. The Subaru Solterra. I don't know what Toyota and Subaru were thinking with these vehicles that they uh, collaborated on. They've been making it, of course, since 20, or producing, or delivering it since 2023. They've had so many issues with recalls on wheels falling off, God. Uh, software having issues, and just... I don't know what they're doing with this thing. This feels like a cop out for an EV. They wanted to get it out as a EV competitor, but it doesn't have any of the competition factors that justify weighing it better. I don't think it's Hummer EV tier. Uh, I'm okay with. I mean, it's dangerous losing wheels. I, I'm okay failing it, like straight up F in it. Maybe <laughs> F in it. Or, you know, low, low, low E, one of those. I would say bottom of F. Bottom of F. Okay. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I mean, the Lord's Town, if you own one, it's it's somewhat of a collector's item. The Solterra thing... ain't even close. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... And, and the, I'm going to put the BZ4X up there as well. Uh, I'm going to put it... It doesn't really matter whether which one's in front of the other. I think they're just... They're awful vehicles. They've got terrible charging. They don't have good range. The interior feels cheap. If you want to get a Subaru, get something that's gas. If you want to get a Toyota, get something that's a lot more reliable. Okay, moving on from that. Jaguar. Jaguar. Uh, or should we just do Toyota? Let's, let's do Since we're Toyota. in the Toyota. Let's do Toyota. 
So we got what they started with, which is the RAV4 EV. That was produced from 1997 to 2003, but we're going to be judging the 2012 to 2014 one. Uh, this one, a lot of people don't realize, uh, if you tear it open, it's got Tesla parts in it. Specifically, in its early days, Roadster parts, and then in its later days, Model S parts. I like the RAV4 lineup. Before I was adamant that we were getting an EV, which became the Model Y, the RAV4 was the vehicle I was looking at. Hmm. Not, but, probably not the RAV4 EV. No. Or at least the, no. the version that we're talking no, about. No, no, no. I'm just saying the RAV4 I like as a vehicle. But this RAV4 EV just, it, it, it kind of makes me a little mad if I'm going to be honest. I, I put this D. D. It's Interesting. D. Yeah. They only made around 2,500 units of it, or at least sold 2,500 units in the United States. Um, and it was pretty much, I think, yeah, it was leased to own for the first version of it. They corrected it with the second version of it. I think D tier is probably worth it. I mean, it is an older vehicle. It, I don't think. Yeah, but it older, that, that what the price, RAV4 again, we're talking is. about the one that came out post 2010. So yeah, 2012 <sighs> to 2014 run the, with a 103 mile range. That That's it. It's that with the price. And I just. Low it's D. D. Low D. Pro- yeah. Probably below VinFast. I don't like the thing. Again, like, I like the RAV4, but the RAV4 EV, that ain't it, Chief. I don't really care where it goes in D. It just belongs in D. Gotcha. <laughs> Agreed. Um, staying in the Toyota group for a brief time, Lexus actually makes an EV. It's built on the same platform as the Solterra and the bz4x and it's called the lexus rz uh it also it no mike my uses, initials are rv ha, 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 ha. rz 220 miles of range so not really that good it's less than what the others have with the same battery but i think the styling is what counts for the rz it I is a luxury is vehicle we're graded on that I've, I've sat in it and I've got to say, the way that they've engineered the door latch to get out is very intuitive. This is something that I believe I was talking about with Drew in our one-on-one podcast earlier in the season. And I hats off to it in terms of design. I think the interior is great, uh, but the specs are just meh. <laughs> All right. So what does that say? You, your ranking is more valid than mine because you actually seen it. I would say this probably goes probably a mm, I'm going to put it at the bottom maybe not bottom. I think I'm going to put it around the Rolls-Royce Spectre area in the C tier. Okay. Sp- uh probably below because if you want luxury, just go for the EQSs above it. Uh, and those have better range, but for the price, it's still not bad to which okay. it's sitting in front of the Arkhamoto. If you want something that's quirky, One, two, <laughs> the RZ is probably a little bit better by. All right. We're almost done. Let's do this. All right. Uh, the kind of lone wolf in terms of the, uh, the group uh, the Jaguar I-Pace. This is something that's been produced between 2018. It's going to end production next year in 2025. Uh, it's gotten, I think, one facelift. Uh, this is something that was called the Tesla Killer for some time. <laughs> and <Okay. laughs> All right. uh, I think its most famous headline is that it became one of the Waymo vehicles from Google for a robo-taxi fleet. Uh, its styling is beautiful in my opinion, but its specs don't really justify high praise for... It's had time to develop. It's got 250 miles of range for a 90 kilowatt hour battery, but it's for like a $72,000 price because you're paying Jaguar prices. Exactly. D, I don't like it. Mm. I would say I put it... 
where do I put this in D? I might, does it go in front or behind the lucid air in D tier? In front. You think in front? Okay. Yeah. Because it's still Below. Jaguar. It has brand recognition. It kind of earned its mm-hmm. little bit of its luxury name over, over its life. And uh, uh, Jaguar, not not the EV itself. but um, I think it, Jaguar's uh, relying on it too much. I think they really need to branch out and make more EVs, in which they, they don't make that many types of vehicles at this point. They're mainly yeah. all uh, crossovers. But at least they did something with it, which I think is commendable. And they added to, not the hype, but at least the ecosystem of EVs in early days. Yeah. Okay. Being 2018, I guess. Now we move on to something I'm very interested in talking about. Quickly, but still interested. Uh, Volkswagen. The Volkswagen Group. But specifically, you're interested in the e-golf in this list. I have ridden in the golf Back when I was in San Diego, a buddy of mine who could not afford a Tesla at the time had the Golf, and then he recently, last year, finally upgraded. He had the money, and he did get rid of his e-Golf for a Model Y. So mm-hmm. he's also he, he when he bought the e-Golf, he had no kids, and now he has two. So that also plays a factor into it. But for what it is, I can only talk about the 2019. No, sorry, 2020. Uh, golf the last one that was made that's that's my experience with it um hmm. he I'm, I'm speaking through him he he knew the range was trash but it was thirty thousand, and it was a city car it was it was serving its purpose for what he wanted it to do um he didn't hate it necessarily he just the whole time let's just say every time we went on lunch he can we take the tesla <laughs> but then i was like nah man you, we're all we're alternating so we took it i i got experience around the e-golf it's a cute very compact tiny tight car um for and i've owned a jetta in my lifetime so i'm familiar very very familiar with the uh volkswagen um ecosystem i guess for lack of a better term my Mm-hmm. My sister-in-law's uh, boyfriend, he works as a mechanic for Volkswagen. So he knows all about this. And then we'll talk about the ID4 too. He, like, this is his bread and butter. So I know a lot about Volkswagen for what it is. All that mm-hmm. to say, he was comparing it to a Tesla the whole time. And he ultimately got rid of it for it. I think, not as a cop-out, but as for what it is, I think it is a very strong city car it could be in my opinion a high at the top c for what that's where i was looking as well okay. i think it goes below the ionic but above the uh ford focus ev yes that, because right it's there. got i think i think it's got better styling uh its specs are like 125 miles of range in a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack for thirty-one thousand dollars, so you're paying kind of like that BMW or sorry, BMW, the VW price. Right. Uh, zero to sixty isn't really that impressive, but it did begin VW's presence in the U.S. with EVs. Yeah. And they also offered a heat bump uh, option as well if you wanted to be a little bit more efficient with it. Right. So I, th- I think it deserves some kudos for what they're trying to do with the Golf brand. They had so many different tiers going on, and they thought, let's add an EV to it. And see how it goes. And yeah. the market responded with, yeah, we'll buy this thing. <laughs> it has its purpose. And even in its stock photo that I'm looking at, it's in the city. It's a city car. It does good city car things. It's just, it's 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 a it's a very strong C+. So I, yeah, right above the focus. Makes sense. Right. Now the ID4. ID4 is also an interesting one because this is one that's been internalized, debated in my own house for a very long time. Again, with my with my wife's sister and her boyfriend talking about this all the time. Well, her sister don't know much about it, but mm-hmm. him him and uh uh and Brittany would have actually Mike, you you met him. You met him at the breakfast at our baby shower. You know he is the big burly man with the beard. You know who I'm mm-hmm. talking about? He, yep. I've he got a is our brain of him. <laughs> he is our uh our uh resident mechanic in the in the family and um mm. 
he swears by the ID4. He loves this thing, but he's also biased. He doesn't like Tesla. So he's a guy who I'm like, oh, good job. Good job. You're promoting the company you work for for that raise. I see what you're doing. So he absolutely loves it, but I call BS where BS exists. And um, the things that I tell him about, he he does, even though he's a mechanic, he he's not, that does not qualify you to be the most knowledgeable person in the room. I had to re-educate him on certain things with Tesla where he goes, all right. But then at the end of the day, he goes like, I just don't like Teslas. And I was like, fine, fair. Agree to disagree. But what that is, ID4. Here's what it gets right over the golf. Just a little bit more expensive, but a significantly a way more amount of range. And it's more efficient. Um, yep. But my overall gripe with Volkswagen is Electrify America. And the way it held out to the very end about like, no, I'm not going to adopt no, 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 and all that. Like, I do not like, no one likes Electrify America, period. And I get that they had to support the thing that they made. But if everything was done right, I, ID4 can, could, in all sense, be, be like a very strong, high B tier I would say that's fair, but I also, there are speed bumps along the way that make me put it maybe low B, but it has to be above the the golf in that sense because it did everything right with more utility and functionality mm-hmm. purposes. I think it properly belongs in a B. Anywhere from the top or the bottom, I think is fair game, and I will default Maybe this will help you. us, Randy, since... Uh it now just gained plug and charge for electrify America uh, and has matrix headlights, which is pretty cool and also offers an optional heat pump. This is something that falls into the crossover SUV cross shopping train yeah. that you were mentioning at the beginning of your discussion. I think a better way to rate it is comparing it to the middle of B tier of okay. where the bolt EUV, the Nissan Aria, the Hyundai, and the Kia, Kona, and Nero all sit along with, I guess, the GV60 a little bit below that. Okay. Do you think this goes above or below any of those? That's a good question. Okay. I think it does better. It's definitely a better product, in my opinion, than a lot of them. But I, I think where disagree. I probably butt up against it is most likely uh, the Bolt EUV where you can get it the bolt euv for a pretty good price and it offers a lot of good things with it and has a I think a comprehensive paint color uh suite the but, only reason i would put it in front of the euv is because i'm biased towards volkswagen over chevy but i my bias blinds me your arrogance blinds you master yoda <laughs> So I think the price alone probably puts the EUV in front of the ID4, but I definitely could see a case where I've got a coworker who owns one. He loves it. He enjoys it. But they took like several years just to get the first update going into it. And you had to bring right. it to the dealership to get it updated. Well, which is this is the, the price depressing. we pay for being early adopters. Weird things like that will happen. And that's why I'm trying to be fair with ID4. Because if I was just doing a side-by-side with my whole family always telling me this over the Tesla that I then I would put that thing in, like, low F <laughs> just to spite oh, them. Oh, jeez. I'm being spiteful. So do you though. think, then, does it go in front or behind the, the EUV? Nah, the, the price is a fair thing that you brought up. I think p- pricing is appropriate. Um, I'm a Volkswagen guy, but I will, I will say that the Bolt makes more sense a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's discontinued, though, isn't it? The Bolt is discontinued. The ID4 still stands, but it is the only VW that you can buy right now in the states before yeah. the uh, ah. the ID Buzz comes. It's around. a coin flip. I don't care. We could keep it where it's at. It doesn't. It's so. It's it's, you know, it's. Um, My personal preference is I'd rather get a Bolt than an ID4. And I think so. I would rather do a Bolt over the the. I mean, I, I think I would rather do ID4 over the Bolt, but. I mean that in a practical sense, like I would buy new and I would only buy that, not a, a used 
bolt. Eh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Right there, keep it either or. It's it's mm-hmm. such it's minuscule at at worst. So, all right, let's move on. With that, then let's move on to the more luxurious segment segment of VW being Porsche, and the I think Ticam. this is where things are going to get very yeah. The Taycan is a it is the dragon of the animal kingdom of evs in my opinion it does everything right in terms of performance and luxury this thing tests the limits the 2024 2025 model whatever you want to call it the 2025 model year uh is an amazing product it can go 10 percent to 80 percent i think in like 18 minutes pretty much regardless of the temperature a lot of the other ones that i listed above from the hyundai kia group or i guess the hyundai motor group are very temperature sensitive, even though that they've got an 800 volt uh, architecture. Uh, They require certain battery temperature, which means you have to precondition a little bit more. The new Taycan, whether it's the GT or just the base, uh, are just that much more well engineered to where you don't have to precondition pretty much at all for this thing. This thing is ready to go amazing speeds at the charging station pretty much one that can uh, support it with 350 kilowatt hour charging or kilowatt hour, 350 kilowatt charging. Um, it's styling is amazing. It's range. I don't think people are really getting this thing for range, but this thing has, uh, it's I think the king of the cannonball record for going from coast to coast in the United States. It is a bit on the pricier side, but, but it's a, it's Porsche. a performance king. It is a Porsche Performance King. You can get in whatever color you want. It's Where do we put amazing, this? Like, I think this thing deserves to be an A. This thing uh, is amazing. Okay. I've got it in probably my favorite style, which is the Mission E rims in white. It looks I, great. I am a secret fanboy of Porsche, like historically. I like the design. I like what Porsche is. Um, out of all the luxury cars... Like Porsche, Ferrari, and all the, you know, the, like I, I like Porsche the most. <sighs> Price put to the side because it's because it's a a luxury vehicle. The range is better than most. It's not the best efficiency, but it's not the worst. I would put it at the very bottom of A. I think I'm gonna pull my trump card on this and put it at the top of A. <laughs> How dare you? No. Then you have. Then we have to meet in the middle. I would put it above. Okay. I'd put it a. Put it. Uh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four. It has to go behind the Model X. Then that's that's dead in the middle. Because you want it at the very top. I want it at the very bottom of A. Right in the middle is the X. I don't like it, but I'll settle on that. Uh, To add on to that, we've also got the wagon version of it (laughs) on this list, uh, in which it's called the Cross Turismo. It just gives it a uh, wagon-looking rear to it. Uh, It's a clean-looking vehicle. It's a clean-looking vehicle. I like that they offer a wagon version of it. I don't think it's a true wagon, but uh, it's the hatch version, pretty much. Yeah. I think it goes I think it goes right next to it. I think it beats the Model X or maybe behind the Model X. I think maybe the Taycan's sandwich the Model X in A tier. Wait, 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 wait. You you think you think it's in front of of uh of the I Taycan think the Cross over- Turismo goes in between the Model X and the E V nine in A tier. We've got two Taycons in here. We've got Taycon Sedan and Taycon Cross Turismo. I'm looking at your list. Hang on. they got somewhat similar specs, but they've got a whole bunch of different options. They're getting CarPlay 2.0, both these things. It's got a whole bunch of customization associated with it and awesome performance. And you're just going to have a good time in it. I think it deserves to oh, be Oh, I see where you have it lined up. It's... It's behind. You have it behind the Model X. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. If you're talking about utility and performance, I think the Model X is still the king. 
in terms of like how much stuff you could stuff in it. No, Mike, the, 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 the porch goes the porch goes behind the Model X. That's that's the middle for the Taycan. That's that's your middle mark right there. That's what we said, because mm. I want it at the very bottom of A. You want it at the very top of A. We meet in the middle. We slice in the middle. I think my compromise is that we have a Porsche on each side of the Model X. Only because Porsche is pushing boundaries with the Taycan. The Model X isn't really pushing boundaries anymore. In fact, it seems like it is the lawn ornament for Tesla at this point. One eternity later. Okay. Okay. Glad we can both be uh, happy with that decision. No, only you're happy. I call BS, but I I don't disagree with the comment you said about X, though. So. Well, I'm about to make things a little bit more unhappy. We're on the last uh, last car manufacturer. Oh, Audi. come on! It's this... and they're sweet. Of vehicles, this might be an easy one to get through. Let's hope. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna list them all, yeah, okay. and then we'll decide where they go. Okay. So Audi makes from 2020 or 2019 to 2022 the e-tron. That then became the uh, Audi Q8 or SQ8 e-tron, where it comes in either a regular boxy shape or sportback version. So the e-tron still kind of lives on in the Q8 version of it. The original e-tron. Then they made a reskin of the uh, the ID4 being the Q4 e-tron in both a squared off and sportback version of it. And then they also introduced uh, the GT or the e-tron, e-tron GT, which comes in the regular GT or the RS edition, which I think the RS pretty much is just a little bit more power and a lot more carbon fiber. There is so... Audi says that they make a lot of electric vehicles, and technically they do, but they're all pretty much just the same vehicle <laughs> with a little bit different options yeah. to associate with them. They should be specs, not different vehicles. They should be different trims of that vehicle. They pretty much make three vehicles, in my opinion. They make the Q4, the GT, and the Q8. But they've got a bunch of different options for those three. Q4. That one makes the most sense price wise. That's a cheap car for an Audi. Holy crap. It's cheap, but I don't know what they're doing with this thing. <laughs> Maybe it's, they're just trying just to price re- point, you know, like, hey, bear of entry, you can say you own an Audi and, and it's relatively expensive. Uh, uh, it's relatively inexpensive for its thing. You're not trying mm-hmm. to do it for its specs necessarily. You're just trying to do it for the luxury tax of it. Like, oh, I have an Audi. Da, 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 da. You know, um, I would argue in this list, the Q8 is probably the best. That's what I was it, trying to get at, is I like the Q8 yes. the most. It's got a higher price than the Q4, but you get a bunch of luxury and decent performance in it. The R it's, or the, the GT is just a little bit too ridiculous. And I guess where my justification is also getting here is that the GT and the Q4 are just reskinned versions of an ID4 and a Porsche Taycan. Okay. All they did is take those platforms, put their own Audi stuff in it, and called it pretty much a day. It has slightly less or worse specs in some regards to what their uh, original vehicles were. Uh, so that's why I think the Q8 probably deserves to be somewhere in C tier. Where okay, maybe it's um, flanked by the GT. But the Q4 definitely deserves to be near the bottom. And the e-tron maybe gets some flowers, but probably deserves to be in D. Um, I say yes to all of that. That's that's okay. a fair a lineup right there. I would say regular e-tron probably goes below the Lucid Air. The Q4 maybe goes above... I don't know if it goes at the top of the D. Maybe it does. Maybe the Q4 deserves to be at the top of D where the fastback uh, is the more stylishly appealing looking one. I think the GT... So Sorry, the Q4 is at the top of D. Both fastback and regular. Okay. The GT maybe 
is in the C tier because it still has Taycan roots. It's just, and it's got somewhat decent God, your styling. bias is showing so hard. Oh yeah, um, I think it goes. I think it goes above the Rolls Royce. Good God! I think all right. The Etron GT goes above the Rolls Royce because it's got performance. But maybe below because the Rolls Royce does luxury better. But GT I think does performance a little bit better. Okay. So it's a toss up in there. All right. And then the Q8 I think deserves to be probably at the bottom of B. Put it at put it at the bottom of B. All right. Only because I'm I'm grading it as a luxury vehicle, not as for the rest of the vehicles. It's it's being graded in its own class classification of style car. It's a luxury. All right. Cool. Oh With my that, god. That is all the EVs on the market. I said at the very beginning of this thing, I was hoping we wouldn't hit the two hour mark. I think we've gone two hours and thirty minutes now, Randy. But we did organize. 73 different EVs, even though that some of them are pretty much I the same, but just never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> it is a gauntlet. Uh, but for uh, those that are watching or those that are listening, I've gotten this far. Thank you very much for sticking with us. If you have a differing opinion and why you think one car should be better than or higher listed than the other in our tier list, let us know in the comments. I will make this also available in the comments for if you want to organize it your own way and share it with us on social media and say why yours is probably the better version of what we made. Uh, but yeah, let us know. I think we made a pretty decent tier list for 2024, Randy. Compromises all around, but one that I can say this feels pretty accurate. I, the stuff that's S tier was the stuff that I feel like is the most important. Ah, I'd even say A tier. I, I I'd, I'd, I'd do A tier as well, but definitely S tier. Like those are those are our tried and true. Everything that I'm proud. Once we got to the B's, I was like, all right, these are above B for above average. C down. I'm like, okay, now so I was just trying to figure out where does all this place C is the most average of the average. But I really like as we climb the tiers. I like the lineup more and more of like this makes the most sense to me. And my takeaway from this. I'm going to end it with this. My takeaway from this is that majority of the vehicles are in C. And C mm-hmm. means that's okay. Like, it's not bad. It's okay. It's, that's We're getting so much closer to mass adoption now. And that, you know, for me, cannot be more... Sh- shown than seeing how many okay cars are there like these are all nothing's bad some of them they're priced based off of or they're 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 tiered based off of price too and you know when you buy a more affordable vehicle that comes at the cost of some compromise and that puts it in the b or c tier and that doesn't make it bad i've driven a lot of c tiered vehicles and some d's and maybe even an f or two but this is this is definitely all good things that out of all the EVs out there, most of them are in C up. That means the ones that are starting to flunk here aren't the aren't the uh, uh, the majority, aren't the outlier. We we can confidently say it's not just Tesla. You know, when I look at this, I'm like, it's not just Tesla. You have all these other uh, good comparables that you can now reference and use and. The outliners are the ones that suck. The the Hummer EVs and the F tiers and the E's and all that. Like those are your outliners. Those those aren't the majorities anymore. So it's a good it's a good place to be in overall for EVs. So yeah, agreed. If I ever do this again, which I don't plan on, I'm I'm I don't want to do this again. But if I do, I'm not gonna know backstory. No, I'm just gonna just go just move right through it because this list is not gonna get smaller. It's only gonna get bigger. Nope, it's doubled pretty much in the last two, two years. years. Though I did add a few more vehicles that weren't covered in the previous tier list with me and Drew. Yeah. But it's only going to grow more and more with the modern day EV. And uh, Which again, that man. is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. That's a good problem to have. If I'm complaining that there's a lot of cars, that's actually a good thing. Right. Well, with that... 
thanks for joining us on this wonderful adventure, audience. And uh, this multi-day. Yeah, <laughs> With that, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you later. Bye. Take care.